Love, love is a verb. Love is a doing word. Wives, husbands, and bits on the side. This is Modern Escape. Hello and welcome to this beautiful celebration of romance. My name is Oodles, and like Cupid, I'm here to fire an arrow into your ears. Joining me today, confirmed to have at least two lovers in his life, it's Stig. Confirmed. Actual. <laughs> confirmed. In writing, in a contract. What is your kill, de- kill death ratio? <laughs> <laughs> Our sources state this girl has had more lovers than I've had Yorkshire puddings. It's candy. Oh, but not the ones I want, though. <laughs> In triple digits with notches on his bedpost, it's Gadget. Yeah, not, not far off. <laughs> and finally, a lover, not one at a time, isn't enough for this man. At one point, he had different lover for every day of the week. It's the love muffin himself, it's Biggie. Can I get a rewind? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Before we get into the show, please consider becoming one of our sexy and incredibly cool patrons. Help us divide and conquer the podcasting world. Details are in our show notes, but mainly check out our website, modernescapism.co.uk, for more exquisite content and links to everything we do. Check out our YouTube and don't forget to review the show. I cannot stress it enough, even if you've done it before. Get a new email address. Do it again. Please. (laughs) <laughs> oh, do you know what I'm feeling really romantic I, really, I could cry because all I want is some hot steamy news <laughs> you may already know but he doesn't because it's time for Biggie's Breaking News I've got your fucking news it's right here here we go <laughs> stop swearing daddy <laughs> you know you like it <laughs> uh, UK regulator investigating Microsoft's attempted $68.7 billion Activision Blizzard takeover that's always referenced in this show. The latest attempt has raised significant concerns over the deal going ahead. In a provisional report published, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, said that Microsoft owning Activision could harm UK gamers and potentially result in <laughs> higher prices, fewer choices or less innovation. The report is not a final judgment on whether the deal is dead. However, the CMA will still inform Microsoft and Activision Blizzard of possible remedies and options to address its concerns with a deadline later this month. I love the word in harm, gamers. Like, ah, it's going to hurt this. Ah, <laughs> stop hurting me. <laughs> Got to lose my pocket. I am harmed without Activision. Presumably anything that Microsoft has just goes on Game Pass anywhere. <laughs> Isn't that better for gamers? If you mean, <laughs> surely not if you're Sony, but yeah, you know, I think Microsoft that. at this point, it's like, well, we're doing it for us as a company. We don't really care what Sony doing. So I think, I well, I think what is... they're what they're probably what? getting at is is that the the one the one Microsoft to say like Activision Blizzard games aren't necessarily going to be exclusive to Game Pass. They want it in writing, don't they? Yeah, they want they want yeah. it in writing that. I mean, I, th- I think they'll probably accept some games will be, but like, you know, they've said that. Because it's only, it's only Call of Duty, Duty, this, isn't it? It's mm. only Call of Duty that, this, that, that anyone cares about. I thought yeah. they already had said that it was going to be on PlayStation as well. Or was it just because it was not in writing? Probably it's just in contract. Right. That's the contract. Mm. They've got so many years or something, hasn't, haven't they? Yeah. However, however, like, mind-numbing this story is it's given us content for months. It needs to continue. <laughs> but the thing is... Well, there's... Um, I have more. Oh, no. <laughs> So the report is due out on the 26th of April. Now, Activision's Blizzard CEO, Bobby Kotick, has accused Sony of trying to sabotage Microsoft's billion acquisition of the company and claims that the PlayStation boss Jim Ryan has stopped talking to both parties involved. Oh, don't you love it in when an interview, Richard white men fight? <laughs> in the interview with the Financial Times, Kotick stated that Sony's entire leadership team stopped talking to anyone at Microsoft. I think this is all Sony just trying to sabotage the transaction. He goes on to say that the whole idea that we are not going to support a PlayStation or that Microsoft would not support the PlayStation, it is absurd. 
<sighs> well, I mean, I, I, you know what? I was listening to a podcast um, last week, I was listening to Grumpy Gamers, and they were talking about how much better Sony are doing actually than Xbox in terms of sales of the of consoles and stuff. At this Somehow. point, if if Microsoft just wanted to buy it and go, right, well, COD's going to become exclusive. You want to play COD, you have to buy an, an Xbox. I can see them do, doing that. Like, it's all, it's I don't, I don't think it massively. Just... I don't think it massively affect PlayStation's trajectory. To be honest, no. Nah. Oh, really? A VR two can... that would destroy their reputation and the, and mm. the funding. <laughs> That's the stupid thing they need to be concerned about. Bringing that fucking thing out. But, but that's a big hitter, though, isn't it? If you would say, we have yeah. Call of Duty as an exclusive. Come to Xbox. That's massive. I mean, to be mm. fair, and to be frank, to, to play devil's advocate and stuff, to, to side with Xbox, they've got better pad for shooters anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> should play yeah, it anyway. It's a way better and to pad be honest, they've got to they've got to deliver the quality of COD as well. If they let that drop, then it, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? I just I just think it's it's just one of them things like, it's it's like a story that will hit casual gamers because it's their their game, isn't it? Usually, like a lot of casual games, it's their yearly game. So this is like, mm. I think it's overblown, mm. bigger than it's, it's not it about is, Activision. This it's about Call of Duty. And no one's saying it. It is interesting that the two biggest casual games, COD and FIFA, are completely up in the air now. Yes, but, it's but it's quite weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see, and it's it is kind of exciting to see what happens. But I, as a PlayStation owner, and I don't own an Xbox, I won't be screaming to the heavens if they acquire Activision. I've still got the best game they've produced, Sekiro, on my PlayStation. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm fine. I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. So yeah, good luck to them. Next. Speaking of lawsuits, an American judge has dismissed the Switch Joy-Con lawsuit which was filed against Nintendo for its Joy-Con drift issues, saying that the case cannot proceed because the owners agreed to Nintendo's end-user license agreement that disallows lawsuits. How did they get that in there? Despite attempts to argue that underage children... Am I having having deja vu here? Because I'm sure you talked about this last week. No. 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 Oh, maybe I'm just from a different podcast then. Oh, no. <laughs> Glitch in the Matrix. What do you mean other podcasts? Yeah, we yeah. are the only podcast. It has been confirmed. Yeah. Is it right? I continue, Stig? Or should I just uh, see wow. if you want to... Wow. Oh, you got wow. done. <laughs> wow. You may continue. I should continue. <laughs> Despite attempts to argue that underage children who use the handheld system cannot enter into agreement, the federal judge ultimately ruled that the agreement was with the de facto owners, the parents, not the children who actually played the console. Consequently, the judge dismissed the action, stating that the parents should have entered legal arbitration rather than lawsuit as instructed by the EULA. Yeah, I think it's mad that the uh, the, the, the quality control on those, um, especially the first batch of Joy-Cons, are ridiculous, aren't they? Mm, I know a lot like, of people it happened to. I watched a few YouTube videos of how to, like, th- th- there's a certain uh, model number of Joy-Cons and the newer ones now, the, the internals are completely different. So I don't think it's as prevalent. But it, I got drift on a on DualSense controller, on a PlayStation controller, so I don't, I think it's a ma- the amount of times you play. You know what I mean? Mm, I, got I on play my first PS5 way more controller. than a normal person at games and for longer sessions. I'm not giving that controller a rest. Mm. I'm constantly charging it. You know what I mean? It's it's one of them things. It's a moving part. It, they, they inevitably will break down. And it, if the manufacturing's not right, then, yeah, it's going to be fucked. Yeah. I remember when the Commodore 64 thing broke. My little... Yeah. <laughs> I went through and, so many Amiga joysticks. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> it was like, oh, come <laughs> on, we'll go... Waggle, we'll waggle. Go. Yeah, we used to go to... Um, was it Tandy's or somewhere like that? We used to go get another one. It was like, seven quid. <laughs> That's the problem. They're yeah. so expensive. Tandy's on, Tandy's on Maplands. Yeah, yeah. We used to get another one. I'm like, another couple of months out of it. Yeah. It's just it's, it's always happened, hasn't it? Or who, who remembers, like, my cousin had a Mega Drive, and do you know the start button on the top of the Mega Drive controller? Yeah. Always sticky. Always, always sticky. sticky. Covered, in, covered in pop, our bogeys. It's one of those, <laughs> <laughs> one of those things. It's because children always are been disgusting the case. creatures. They are, they are. But, yeah. It's it, it's shit, but never mind. Get one of those cheap knockoff ones instead. 
According to Sky News, uh, the deal, which is apparently thought to be around £488 million, um, was shared with the Premier League clubs as uh, EA looking to take the licence back for FIFA, uh, soccer, football, whatever. What the fuck? Already. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah, who wants to play EA Sports Football? They'll just look called FIFA. Well, they're yeah. originally supposed to be looking at paying £1 billion or something for the licence. They're like, you can fuck off. Well... Yeah, 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 but quid. yeah, but also, also remember with the FIFA, FIFA wanted a billion for it over a number of years, but that was for all of the teams represented by FIFA. This is just for the Premier League clubs. Yeah, mm. so this is just four hundred eighty-eight million for twenty-two clubs. <laughs> That's subject to change. <laughs> it seems Chuck like a worse deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a if billion I were for EA, every club in the world, or half a I, billion for UK if, football. <laughs> If I were EA at this point, and again, I'm not EA, contrary to popular belief, I'd be like, let's just test this EA football club. Let's just test it for one year. If people still buy it and it's not too too far off the the numbers we usually sell, fuck FIFA. You know what I mean? It's a really decent one anyway. Pez has shot itself exactly. in the foot. So this is exactly. literally it anyway. Well, you mean e-football. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let the game speak for itself. I will buy EA FC. I buy FIFA they, every they, year. They should so have. I will buy um, that. They should have named the game so the acronym was still FIFA. So it should have been something like <laughs> "Football is for all." Football is for all, and then future FIFA. international football. <laughs> yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Football but is for all. FIFA. Yeah, I like football that name. No, I like it. That's genius. Someone give that man a job. At EA. Someone yep. give that yeah. man a job <laughs> for one game. <laughs> oh, one game mate if you work for FIFA you'd be fine if you worked on that game you, you've got a career for the rest of your life mate I mean uh, uh, yeah you either work for EA and FIFA and make a million off uh, microtransactions or you go work for FIFA itself and you make a million in bungs from Russia <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> regardless you are making money <laughs> next here's an oldie a bit of goldie go, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive has just broken its all-time concurrent PC user peak 11 years after it launched on Steam. Fantastic spotted game. by a PC gamer, the shooter which has been around in one form or another over 20 years at this point, uh, recently surpassed its own concurrent record, hitting an all-time peak of 1.3 million players over the weekend. Brilliant it's game. One of, the only, one of the only online shooters I've ever truly been in love with. It's, God, it's a great game, it's... but I'm fucking terrible at it. Oh, oh, I'm not the, good at it, but I just love it. A-level... Literally, my A levels were. Oh, o- go home. O- o- OG Counter Strike! I was brilliant. I, I, I oh, can't get yeah. on. With, I can't get on with CS:GO. They, they are too CSGO. good. Too much G fuel going on. I think. I have. I have. Won, <laughs> I have won some matches and stuff. I've won some, you know, team games. But I'm not good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? yeah. I'm not good. I love I, when I bought this PC a few years ago. It was one of mm. the first games I reinstalled, yeah. and and I went back on and played. I used to be able to just start a game, and press my keys like two three one three like that and, and i'd buy all my equipment i'd be gone in like a couple you seconds. knew what yeah you knew how to buy I knew it, yeah. where everything was and like now yeah. it's just like like an old man going two <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the arthritis okay, in my that one's, kef- that one's the kevlar okay i need a gun okay that's the, there's an eagle right now i'm ready to go my team's just fucked off i'm gone yeah. half of them already dead <laughs> i love watching cs go uh esports because and it's the funniest thing in the world to me you ever seen them when they're actually when you get the camera shots mm. the players actually playing the game and like their eyeball is like a millimeter away from the screen where the reticle is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, they have that they screen. Have no they have that screen centering, don't they? Well, they have screen no peripheral vision shop. because their face is right up against the monitor. It's fucking hilarious. I love it. I like, like it when some of them play like that halfway up their arm and shit like that. Yeah, just, they're great. That like, cool <laughs> as well. They've got them fucking drinking caps on, so they can go. <laughs> look like fucking little gaming <laughs> goblins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've got them keyboards that are just the like wasda. Things, aren't they? They've just got them little, little half keyboard things. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Obviously, they're professionals. They're psychotically good at it. But I always just love it when, like, you know, you get the match starting off, and someone will throw smoke, and then someone, yeah. someone will just like fire three bullets and kill three players through something they can't see. And I'm like, okay, I've played CS:GO. The sound is good. You can get a rough idea where people are, but it's still not that fucking good. How do you know where they are? <laughs> They don't make them like that anymore. Great kill on Dust, where Mm. when you go into the underpass and there's the double doors on the left, and he just and he runs through there and he and he jumps across and he sees briefly sees someone through the crack at the top of the ramp, bang, bang, like one shot and wins the game. It's an incredible shot. 
I've no yeah. idea how people yeah. have reactions like that. It, they, have nah. to, they have to have replaced their, their blood with energy drinks. A lot of G Fuel. A lot of G Fuel. <laughs> It's it's just a, such a good game. If you're listening to this, and you've never, never played, played CS, CSGO ever. Oh, wow, me. you've never played it. You need to just no, I, have a few, have have a a few rounds. It was, it's it's a mate. Play, it'll man. run on a fucking. It'll run on a tatey. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, do you make a team, Biggie? <laughs> oh yes. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I would love team? to see you two stream yeah. CS Biggie Machine. Oh, I'd love to see Biggie Machine go for it. <laughs> it's Biggie Machine. Oh it's my good. god, it is free to play. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. It will run on a fucking calculator, mate. It's oh, <laughs> such, such a good game. Yeah, next. Into the world of film and TV, the wonderful Viola Davis has become the 18th person to achieve the EGOT, which is winning an Emmy, a Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award as the Grammy Awards kicked off in LA. Yeah, Stig won one of them last collection. week, last, last year, didn't you, Stig? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, she's she's brilliant. So she's fantastic. She's Just fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. So she completed it argue. for her collection by winning best audio book for her autobiography Finding Me. Hmm. The star won the best supporting actress Oscar in 2016 for Fences. Her Emmy Award recognised the TV drama How to Get Away with Murder, which I thought was excellent. Really? She has two t- two <laughs> Tony Awards. Oh, it might have got worse, but I'd, I'd like to when it started. <laughs> It was absolute uh, unmitigated bollocks, that show. She was brilliant <laughs> in it, but fuck me. The exactly. Rest of, the rest of it was a pile of wank. Everything she's in, she's always best thing in it. Oh, I, I, yeah. yeah. It'd have to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> she's just the best. Don't hate me for liking something. Uh, Tony Awards for her theatre work. Yeah. Uh, featured an stage. actress in a play for King Headley II in 2001. And lead actress in a play. Oh, sorry. I mentioned Fences as well. So, yeah, yeah. she's done really well, isn't she? She's done all right. <laughs> she's done all right. She's going to be comfortable for the rest of her life. Probably worth a pay rise, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I bet her agent's yeah, she wants fucking to get stood the there. Golden going, collection. Yes. She needs to come on as a guest on Scorch Sheet. See if she's available. Might find think, something to uh, get her a big, get her a biggie. Then she's then she'll be one ahead yeah. of every other egot winner. Yeah. <laughs> I think that our she people. Had a bigot. Our people, our people that represent us, could get in touch with Earth people, and I think we could get that arranged. Hang on, people represent yeah. us. Oh yeah, haven't have I not told you? Have I had a lawyer? <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> and an agent. <laughs> Don't need to know about your cook uh, habits. <laughs> no, it's coming. It's coming out the. It's coming out the Patreon fund. Don't worry. <laughs> Two, two, have you hired Lionel? Two pound Hunts? a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, money down. <laughs> You may remember me from such agencies as... <laughs> different character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Same voice actor, different yeah. character. Come yeah, on, that's Troy, Mc- Troy McClure, isn't it? God's sake. God's sake. Next! Fuming pop culture. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Backrooms horror film based on the viral shorts by 17-year-old Kane Parsons is in works at A24, Atomic Monster, uh, Churning, and 21 Laps. So over the last year, director and VFX artist Kane Parsons has been shooting his own YouTubes, falling into the stratosphere with the viral success of his mysterious short, The Backrooms, Found Footage. It's the first in a series of found footage horror videos. It's that liminal space shit, uh, isn't it? Yeah. It's really good. I remember it kicking off last year. I remember it kicking off being a thing like, liminal space, there's ghosts in them. It was the first thing I heard of it when I saw that story, so... (laughs) Checked it out on YouTube. There's a liminal yeah, space. Really I'm looking at a liminal space right now. Oh my god, there's two eyes. Fuck. That's, that's the cat. That's <laughs> the cat. <laughs> Wait, we don't have yeah, a cat. If you haven't seen them, uh, check them yeah. out. They're awesome. Yeah, it's mad how good he is for a 17 year old. Yeah. Makes me feel old. Mm. He's going to go places, hopefully. Be Ideally, not to the, the back of it. Yeah, absolutely not. No, no, definitely not. Cool, cool. Next. Stop vaping. You're on the news. Sadly, Faulty Towers is in for a reboot with John Cleese, <laughs> Camilla Cleese, and Rob, <laughs> Rob Reiner's Castle Rock Entertainment. More than 40 years after the second and final season, Monty Python star John Cleese is set to write and star alongside his daughter, Camilla, in the news that will bring joy to a generation of comedy fans. It will oh. not. You know, this is going to be as good as that Boyce spin off of Only Falls and Horses. <laughs> The green, green grass. This yeah, is going it's going to be, be that be good. Outside of the Nepo baby aspect of it, 
Yeah. It, it's just going to be Basil Faulty going like, this is woke. Oh, yeah. these young people. Oh, this has happened. Uh, don't mention the woke culture. Don't mention the cancel culture. It's like, I'm oh, not okay. wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> okay. full of fucking horrible, vaguely fa- veiled homophobia, transphobia, misogyny. It's going to be shit because that's all Cleese has. That's all of his comedy is. Is just, I'm an old man and I don't like how the world has gone. Because I'm not However, however... Morbid curiosity is peeking its head around the corner. <laughs> it should not. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I should watch it when it comes out. <laughs> because the thing is, if you this if is... you go back and look at the original Faulty Tower stuff, objectively, mm. John Cleese was an awful person back then because the shit that Basil does is pretty awful to everybody around him. It does smack his staff up a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. And it's just Jeremy going to get worse. Style. It's just got to get worse because John Cleese has had forty years of divorces and <laughs> elderly bitterness <laughs> to fucking put on the world. Get ready for Faulty Towers in review coming soon. Apparently, Joking. Basil will be having an, a relationship with a daughter he's only just discovered he had. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's, it's not even it's a, a great idea. Na- is it? Nice cliche that, isn't oh. it? Oh yeah, they just the be daughter fit. from. <laughs> yeah, the pair tempt fate and team up to run a boutique hotel. Fuck's sake! Oh no, nah, it's gonna be utter fucking bollocks. Yeah. Yep. Next, uh, Resident Evil trailer came out for Death Island. Anybody see that? Yeah, I'm into it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm love into the re- it. I love the Resident Evil anime films. They 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 lean into the absolute insanity of the games. They're what mm. the films wish they were. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're really good. It's. I mean, Chris has had another face redesign. He never seems to have the same face two properties in a row. He's got a very good surgeon. He's got a very good surgeon. Uh, Leon looks. His more, hair is immaculate. Yeah, Le- Leon's hair is it still eighty percent of his character. Jill Valentine's in this <laughs> one, which which is the first time she's made it into any of the movies. Is Leon Matt Mercer in this again? I probably assume he would be because he was Matt he's Mercer in fa- Vendetta. He, yeah, he's my favorite. He's my favorite Leon voice. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I'm. I'm into it. it it'll, I mean, if you watch Resident Evil Vendetta, it's great. It's an oh, incoherent yeah. mess, but the yeah, action is fucking brilliant. There is a five-minute scene of Leon and Chris in a in a hallway doing gun fu, and it's hysterically funny. Yeah, because it's, like it's equilibrium so plus. Yeah, <laughs> it's what Steven Seagal Very thinks good. his films look like. <laughs> in his head, yeah. yeah, they're good. They're better than any of the films. So, yeah, yeah, give them a oh, watch. That, that, they're that, still that, daft. That, that, yeah, they're still shy, but they're still shy. But I think it, it, it's like a knowing shite. Like they, they know they're daft. Like yeah. that Infinite Darkness that was out on Netflix last year wasn't great. I think that was the worst one. That they've the rats, done. though, the zombie rats. Oh, the zombie oh, rats are fucking terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, like, really? like if, if you watch one of the earlier animes, I can't remember whether I think it's Damnation. Um, you get Is Leon. That the airport f- one. No, the the other one, the one after that, Degeneration. Oh. Then um, Degeneration, yeah. It's like Leon's f- uh, fighting in Eastern Europe against a fucking titan-sized monster. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> With a pistol. With a pistol, it's great fun. <laughs> Infinite ammo. Yes, it's so good. Next. Oodles Crush Andrew Garfield has been cast as the iconic monster in Guillermo del Toro's up-and-coming Frankenstein movie. It's being produced as part of the filmmaker's deal with Netflix. According to sources, the Spider-Man actors join in the project alongside fellow Marvel actor Oscar Isaac, who will be portraying the titular Doctor. It is currently unknown whether Guillermo... Guillermo. Del Toro. Guillermo. Guillermo. Gizmo. Uh, it's, un- it's unknown Gizmo. whether uh, Gizmo. <laughs> Gizmo, whether it will be a direct <laughs> adaption of Mary Shelley's original novel or all the other kind of takes on the material we don't know at this point. You know what bothers me about this? I mean, it sounds like it's going to be good, but getting one of the best looking men in the world, in my opinion, to become a hideous monster is a waste of talent. <laughs> and it's going to annoy me. Because <laughs> his talent is being good looking. Yes! <laughs> That's it! I think he does it's that hard. I know every it. other week. He's the Uber Ooh. Twink. He's the, he's the best of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> mm. so I'm up for it. Carry. I reckon Oscar Isaac would be a really good Victor Von Frankenstein. I think he'd be really good. Mm. He'd be, he'll do that like, cackle that he can sometimes do. do you know when he, did you see him in, um, what's that fucking robot where he creates a robot one? 
Oh, um, Ex Machina. Ex Machina, yeah. If he does that, that, that brings that to a kind of fucking Frankenstein thing. I think that would be badass. And be yeah, good. that would work. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's alive! Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. Next. So we're bringing it on. Disney are bringing quite a few things to uh, surprise nobody that um, Toy Story and Frozen have sequels on its way. Actually, to this be fair... will be the, the, Toy the, Story 5. The Toy Story sequel kind of surprised me because... Toy Story 4 kind of had a very final final ending to it. So did 3. Yeah. (laughs) Well, 3, I mean, spoilers for Toy Story 4, right? 3 at least still had the toys together. 4 has them all split up. So... I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're all going to miss each other and run across town to meet up with each other again. Oh, fucking silly. Or maybe maybe Disney don't want to pay Tim Allen anymore. Did you ever watch the uh, Toy <laughs> Story, no, the Toy Story shorts, the Halloween one, and stuff like yeah, that? They're good. Yeah, yeah, they're really they good. were so good, and the dinosaur one was so good. All all of yeah, the Pixar the shorts are brilliant in their own way. Yeah, just, just do that. Do a high concept Toy Story for fucking two hours. I'm bang up for that. Just there's something strange. Well, I, I, I I enjoyed Toy Story for was it? I don't think it was. I did. Just, it, you know, the first three to me are like a perfect trilogy. Yeah, three is a really good f- f- end Cap- point. I enjoyed four. Now, as I discussed in our Discord, this is literally going to be the fifth film over the course of 30, 32 years. That's it's not bad, not, is it? It's, it's not, not bad. bad. It's not like it's, it's, not, it's not Rocky, the fifth is it? film. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the fifth film within eight years or something. Like, they've had, they spread it out over different generations. And, and, and come on, we love them characters. Why not? Why the fuck mm-hmm. not? Frozen 3 makes complete sense. Yeah. Loads yeah. to be told in that. In that I universe. really like 2. I think 2 is better than 1. And I Zoom. do too. Yeah, two, two, mar- two is better than one, and the song, yeah. and the songs. Mm. Songs are better as well, yeah. Show yeah. yourself is better than let it go. Oh god, here it is. Come on, give a rendition of it, stick. Yeah. <laughs> it nearly did. Um, it nearly went for it then. <laughs> and Zootopia went. made a billion dollars, so of course I, I, I love, I love Zootopia. Zootopia. Oh, I like yeah. it. God, there's going to be so much more fucking furry porn on the internet if that is a <laughs> sequel for that. There were no sexy ones in that. None of them were the sexy. Was sexy. You don't go to certain places on the internet because Jesus Christ <laughs> no, fucking Judy. There's only sexy. The fox is pretty sexy. Ju- <laughs> is it Judy Hopps as the, the main character? The rabbit. There's fucking so much of her. It's ridiculous. <laughs> people because get... people on the internet are cretins. <laughs> <laughs> you find cartoon oh. rabbit sexy. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's weird. Um, you did, oh, just jumping on the back of this, though, you did mention um, Pixar shorts. They're doing an up one. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Not emotionally yeah. ready to cry for fifteen minutes <laughs> about him going on his first date since his no. wife died. No, no she's going to die on him. <laughs> Was he on Tinder? <laughs> oh, God. oh man, it's going to kill everyone. Was it Grinder? That. <laughs> Could be. And he's like, all these gents are really friendly. They all want to be my mate. <laughs> No, he just thought it was weird when a little uh, fat scout lad turned up at his door. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what happened there? Are you my tea? <laughs> Let's go to Blues Peru together. <laughs> oh, God. Big E. Big E, man. Moving on. I miss that. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to not go back to it. You'll, you'll hear it. You'll hear it in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one that no one's asked for so Sony Pictures has tapped Jennifer Katim Robinson director of last year's high school satire Do Revenge to helm a sequel to I Still Know What You Did Last Summer no <laughs> right <laughs> I, I talked about this in our Christmas episode yeah legacy you did. sequels to old horrors Sorry. are all shit yep however Do Revenge was quite a lot of fun and a nice little play on things so if she manages to bring that to it yeah but knows? in that series of films it's only the first one that's worth watching so oh yeah what's the point i no remember clamoring I, for it I, I vaguely remember what you did 20 years ago yeah. this summer <laughs> 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 yeah yeah now fuck no one needs that no one needs no. but it will make millions of dollars that's what it'll do yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the the, the uh, young adult books that it was those films are based on—they were really good. I read yeah. them as a kid. Yeah, the, yeah, um, I remember people saying never that. liked the films. Yeah, I'm still waiting for an Animorphs film. To be honest, <laughs> young young books. Remember them? I remember them. <laughs> do you remember Point Horrors? They need to do more Point Horror. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my sister had like about fifty of them. Yeah, me too. Lord, she had like, yeah. all of them. 
Goosebumps, man, that, that, that was the shit. Shivers. Shivers were better than Goosebumps. Yeah, Remember goose- Shivers? <laughs> goosebumps give you that tactile feeling on the cover, though. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. And then ev- everyone's searching for R.L. Stein. Well, who is R.L. Stein? Who is R.L. Stein? Oh, who could it be? But yeah. Next. <laughs> oh, my God. Vin Diesel says he relates to why <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien stopped writing The Lord of the Rings. He said it's so hard to continue mythologies. No one thinks about it in that context. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to have his confidence. I d- in English, I'll just, I'll just refer this to, to the listener. <laughs> Basically, Vin Diesel is likening himself to the legendary J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> I didn't have that on my 2023 bingo card. I'm going to say that's oh, a, basically oh a man that launched a genre <laughs> forever. Well, Vin Diesel launched a genre, didn't he? The, 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 the family genre. Racer. Yeah. <laughs> the family racer. The thing, the, thing, the thing that's funny about this is if you're a Patreon, if you listen to our latest, Too Faff, Too Curious, there is a bit right near the end after you d- discussed about Paul Walker's death about what Vin Diesel had said about it and how <laughs> serious he takes this. But oh, how it uh, finally let grown men cry, be able to cry for, at last. I'm like, oh, at last, on, mate. At last, at he used last. to cry. Like, no one's ever cried before until that. You know, sad as I didn't, that was. I didn't know I had tear ducts until I watched that film. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh... You cried precisely three times in your life, Oodles, when each of your kids was born and when you saw Fast 7. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I saw a clip on TikTok the other day about this and it was hilarious. Um, in, in Fast 2, Ludacris is just a guy who owns a garage mm-hmm. and uh, organises street races. Fast forward several films later and it goes to a clip of him going, I'm hacking the Pentagon. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's, that's a massive leap. It's, it's a big leap. <laughs> oh, God. Like most so of the stunts. He is Luda. I am telling you, he is he was, Luda. Well, I think I did bring it up in in Too Faff as well. It's just like, how did you get from how did we get from these street racer films to like world ending spy shit kind of films? Like, you know, I know they basically work for the government now. What, I know each film what has are they to escalate, good? but it, it, you... it, it's it's that continued disbelief at like why are secret government agencies bringing Dom and his crew in to do something? <laughs> because they always win. I'm sure I that the government yeah. would be able to find better drivers who aren't criminals. <laughs> yeah, well, but Can't also um, speaking of that, there was a Fast Ten trailer, wasn't there this week? Oh, Badass, good. loved it. <laughs> loved Have you it. seen how they've linked it? It's all linked to Fast Five. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't watched it yet because I want to get I the other films it. out of the way. Yeah, it doesn't spoil the other films because it's linked to Fast no. Five. What happens in Fast Five? All right. So you'll... Oh, it's badass. Oh, Do I want to remember that though? What a, se- what a series of films. Absolute delight. They are certainly films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are the sagas of our generation, mate. They, they, these really, are our they fables. Should, they should have ended with Fast 7, not just because of the, the quality dropping more than they, they were, but Paul Walker's gone. Just, yeah. That should have been the end. And actually, that wasn't a bad ending for them. No, it weren't a, a bad char- ending, were it? Them no. two as a character, like driving down the road together. That's a nice little ending for it all. It just doesn't make sense why you would carry up, why these things would carry on, and he Brian wouldn't get involved. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Especially meanwhile, meanwhile Peter Walker, because he doesn't have to appear in the sequels. I'm still here. I'm still here waiting for fucking Hobbs and Shaw too. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> relatively okay compared to the last few it's, fast films. It's, it's better than the fast films. I think yeah. Hobbs and Shaw were really good. Me. I think I think these two will <laughs> like it as well. It's less about the cars, mate. Less about the cars. More about the muscles. More mm. about the muscles, baby. Yeah. What pair of thumbs they were. Absolute <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> thumbs running around. Next. Moving swiftly on. Linkin Park have announced the release of a never heard before song called Lost. The track arrives ahead of the 20th anniversary of Meteora. The band shared the news on social media. Uh, saying that Lost, a never before heard song, uh, it becomes. A, oh, sorry, it's already out. Uh, Linkin Park have been on a hiatus since the 2017 death of frontman Chester Bennington, but last year said they're planning to communicate with their fans a little more regularly moving forward. 
comes after Shinoda told fans that the uh, band is still in regular contact. The only Linkin Park news I have for you is that, yeah, we talk every few weeks. I talk to the guys or some of the guys. Um, you just wanted people to make sure that there's no albums in the pipeline. And just let, let, let me tell you that. So keep in your minds that that is not happening. I'm just going to say that much for now. I say that because anytime the band says anything or do anything, everyone starts to start up the hype train. And we're like, no, 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 no. Don't start up the hype train. You're going to disappoint yourself. Don't do that. It's a fucking brilliant song. I really Absolutely enjoy stunning. it. I really liked yeah. it. And I had um, a bit of a, bit of a tear, tear in my eye when I was listening to it. And the, vi- the video is excellent as well. Yeah, I heard it. I, I, I didn't even know the last album before he died, to be fair. Um, it, well, it, it, so it's one of the tracks from the Meteora Sessions. So it's, it, it's one they left off the album. It's not like they found like just a track of Chester singing. And they've built a song around it. It was actually a finished well, like song. They always keep doing for Freddie Mercury every yeah. truffin over here. Now, this, like, this, this, how many have they done? <laughs> this, the, um, people were asking why it didn't get on Meteor. And Mike, uh, Mike Shinoda did an interview with the radio station. He basically said the song had too, it felt too much like numb. It had that same kind of vibe to it. So they didn't want two songs on the album that sounded like that. So they just didn't put it on. Oh, um, I, I, I only really liked Hybrid Theory. I, I, I love Meteor. I think Meteor is the better album. I think it's a, it's a much more focused album. I think I'd, I think I'd gone off by that, but like again, I don't hate them. Don't I'm not yeah. trying to bad mouth Linkin fucking Park, mate. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. They've got but, um, eight point seven view, eight point seven million views in two days on YouTube so far. God knows how yeah. many it's, it's on Spotify. Mm. Mad. The um, you, you'd like the video actually because what they've done is they've taken live footage of them performing, mm-hmm. um, but they've they've. Had a, had the the animators basically put like anime style faces on them so they can sync Chester's lines with the song rather than just being like yeah. a live video. They've always um, been obsessed with anime, though, aren't they? Oh yeah, because mm. two of them are Japanese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that helps. It's nice. It's a really nice song. I really, I really enjoyed it and had a bit of a moment just sitting there reflecting and listening to it the first time. Yeah, really he had good. some pipes on him though, didn't he? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, did. Pipes on him. Wow, how we did the that. Metal, one of the greatest metal singers of all time. Oh, mm. the, the pipes were ridiculous. I don't know how he. I don't know how someone has that kind of range. Me personally, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a listen to. I'll give that a listen to. Yeah. Next. Over to the uh, weird world web. Ubisoft has had some issues with the Division Two of late. So oh, last week, this up, look. he's bringing this up. Again. Ubisoft announced that it delayed the planned seventh of February launch of season eleven. Uh, Rain of Fire due to a localization issue. Then, in a tweet published the day after, Ubisoft admitted that creating a fix for this problem, it caused an error that brought down the game's build generation. This means the development team cannot update the game at all until the system is rebuilt. So their update fucked an update, and now it's fucked. And it did that while you were playing it? No. Oh. Hey, this is well, the I have s- logged on and it's been fixed. This is, what, the sixth, uh, this is the sixth episode we've recorded this year and the fourth time you've brought up the Division 2. <laughs> I, just, I just want it in the pod art. You like it? <clears throat> but, it's not going in the pod art. <laughs> but further on to that, uh, The Witcher 3's next-gen update. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> See, <laughs> now, this one... <laughs> this one polished the 2015 game. So it's got a nice look, added fast travel points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what they didn't realise was that one of the mods has added some seriously detailed genitals to the game, i.e., feminine monsters now have <laughs> perfectly looking bits. What bits? What bits are they, mate? I don't understand. They're bit bits. What? What's its scientific name? Flangelina Jolie's. All oh, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so okay. an investigation has turned up exhaustively modelled Volve on the four characters in particular. Volve. The crone, Volve. <laughs> Volve. The crones of Crookbag Bog Podcast title. in their Volve. human forms. <laughs> no. <laughs> I go with Flange vi- <laughs> Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Pod title. And the uh, vampiresses that you occasionally find uh, chomping on people. And yes, apparently the uh, there's a theory that even CDPR weren't aware that this mod was there <laughs> and they are looking into it and will have more information in the coming days. So even this they were surprised. This keeps happening with that, that company. They keep not knowing that things up. are in their own games. 
I'm just reading through the text that you've put in the document. What the fuck? This is a sentence. It's only a theory, but I have to imagine this unexpected new addition comes courtesy of one of the many mods CDPR integrates The Witcher 3 as part of this update. Like every game that's ever existed, The Witcher 3 had a number of nude mods for its character, and I bet one of these beautification mods CDPR added smuggled in a pelvic payload. <laughs> pelvic payload. <laughs> Unleash the pelvic payload right now. And uh, <laughs> It, there were links oh. in that article. If you clicked on it, it would take you to the images that are on. Um, I don't want to see it. No. I'm fine. And somebody's obviously had to sit there and detail those mods. They've done a good job. Yeah, probably you. <laughs> you keep bringing CD Projekt up. I think you've got shares in them. <laughs> probably you, you little I modder. It. I just love the fact that they had no idea the mod was in there. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Didn't? Yeah. Did they not oh, know what weird. they were putting into their game? <laughs> Is thing it is, theory? Right, they are the developer. They said they're looking into it. They should look, have look, not. The pelvic payload is the perfect segue <laughs> to our new next segment. Um, <laughs> for this month only, for this month only, <laughs> Big It is reading love letters out and correspondence. So even though he's just chatted for the last what, half an hour, it's time for him to get going again. So... Turn the dim the lights, light a candle. He's lighting candles now. I can see him. That's because <laughs> he's fart. It's because he's farted in his room, isn't it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> What's he doing? Looking for the letters. Biggie, this uh, is your segment. We're waiting for you. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do it straight away. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, listeners, welcome to the love hour. Hour. So our first. For our, yeah, it's, it's going to be. There's a lot here. No, there isn't. Um, so our first one that's come in, it's come from Hot Toddy. Email bigboy.howard69 <laughs> at bethesda.com. <laughs> first message. Dear Candy, please thaw the heart of this frost troll and do me the honour of joining me on a date this Nick Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'll whisper sweet little lies into your ear until the dragonborn comes. <laughs> oh, and if you invite me home for the night, I can assure you it just works. I'll make you... <laughs> 16 times a lady by Skyrim and then anonymously T.H who could that be? That's brilliant. I That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Of all the love offers you've received that's probably up there. That's did top 10, by, isn't it? Did it say by Skyrim at the end? <laughs> Again. That's the Valentine's edition of Skyrim. <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> I, do, I, I did love the Be My Nick Valentine. That's fucking genius, that. Oh. It's genius. <laughs> Brilliant. It doesn't end there. Takahashi Ichigoya Samanuski. Yes. <laughs> Check that out. Check that out. <laughs> it's been <laughs> practicing that. <laughs> Tis at Nailed googlemail.com. It. Message. Dear Biggie, I live in a block of flats, and the girl that lives opposite to me is very beautiful. She's one of those sexy goth girls that you just want to let them sit on your face. In your expertise, in the land of love, what can I do to seduce her without being a mega creep? Love, <laughs> Takahashi. Nice. Well, Takahashi... <laughs> He's got an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty weird to send dick pics. I wouldn't go down that route to get them interested. <laughs> But if, if this lovely girl that lives across from you is interested, I would send all the other body parts as pictures just so they know what they're getting in the whole package. Send a bit of an arse crack and armpit. Who knows what gets her love juices going. I would send that if, it, if I was you. Jigsaw that she's got to put together. <laughs> this is a mistake. Is that an <laughs> this, this was a mistake. <laughs> Biggie, are you su- suggesting you become the Zodiac fucking killer? <laughs> The Zodiac lover. Oh, God. There's actually serious ones in this as well. <laughs> oh, no. That was pretty serious. Is that your answer then? So, jigsaw, body parts, and submit well, it, them to it, her. It, it's not just up to me. And what are you guys' thoughts? Any advice no, from no, the this team? This is your segment. This is you. your segment, mate. This is. This, well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying to you guys if you've got any uh, thoughts as well. I'll stick with your advice. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up a series never... of banners. First one saying, tell them it's carol singers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it. Mm, then ah. give them the jigsaw of body parts. 
Okay, next up. <clears throat> so this is from Kurt. Hi, ME crew. First, I'll ask my question for Biggie, but open to everyone. Serious faces on. Uh -oh. How do you meet? Did you meet your partners? I'd say meeting the potential girlfriend is the biggest barrier I'm facing to genuine happiness in my life, but find it so difficult even with the help of dating sites. I try setting up groups at both work and in my local area and in the various places I've lived, such as film clubs, and whilst they've attracted people, it always tends to be men or couples. I've also tried attending the other clubs, but to no avail. I recently joined an improv group, which is a lot of fun and something I'll stick with, but there isn't anyone in my age range there, so that didn't prove fruitful. I'm at a bit of a loss and won't lie, it does really get me down a lot, and sometimes that oh. I find is so hard. What you need to do, Kurt, is take a picture of each of your individual body parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, no, you don't. No. In all seriousness, um, for me, I met my wife on uh, the cruise ship. I worked with so her. So she couldn't escape. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, in, in all seriousness, I used to be very shy. Um, I did come out of my shell eventually. And I was in various relationships until I met my wife. And she was somebody that had a certain something, a chemistry, something that I was interested in. And I didn't want to let that one go. Mm. And normally I'd be very shy about asking them out for a, a date or something like that. So I actually just built up the courage and went for it. Because at the end of the day, what are you going to lose? They're either going to say yes or no. And she stupidly said usually. yes. Mm. But yeah, you know I what? You can pick yourself up and move on. Because yeah, otherwise you, make... you will never know. You will never know. If you don't yeah, ask, I agree. So yeah, I, I see. I met uh, Kate through work as well. Just I, I'm the same as Biggie. Um, when it came to On actually, no, when it came to actually <laughs> talking to girls and asking asking them out, I, I was useless at it. I was always, always shy. Like you know, when it came to just kind of trying to pull someone in the club, I didn't have an issue. It was then. It was if it was if it was if I wanted it to be serious. I just mm -hmm. couldn't. Like at times, I'd literally get my friends to go up and say, "Like, can you speak to her?" And it, it, yeah. it was because of stuff like uh, Facebook that helped with that, really, because we could chat over Facebook and text messaging. So I think if it was me, I would just kind of stick to the, find the good dating sites, stay away from the absolute trash ones, have a look Ooh. at the the ones that are a bit more reputable. And there's been a lot of successes from some people, haven't there, with these, yeah, these and sites? Just, the good ones, the ones that maybe just, that you have to pay for a little bit. Yeah, and just take the time to chat to them and, and think. Yeah. Gives, stuff like that gives you the time to actually think about your answers. It's that was the same for me, like being able to like you know talk to Kate over Facebook or, and then get her her number and text message each other. Just it made things more relaxing for me rather than having to do it face to face, which I could just never do. Like. When I was at school, I never had a single girlfriend through school other than for like a week once because I just yeah. couldn't chat to girls at all. Unfortunately, came around. Really yeah, it me. does make it easier. But unfortunately for me, I had a cheat code. Um, I were in a band, so don't listen to my advice. Yeah. <laughs> That's the cheat code. <laughs> That's just how it. I didn't even ask. As a, <laughs> as, a, I mean? as a lady, um, my opinion would be that sometimes love blossoms from probably where you would least expect it so do your best to not necessarily looking um at somebody as a partner but just get out there and make friends make friends with people because if you're there laughing with the, no pressure you never put yourself the, the worst thing i think for romance is going on a date like the first the first date it's it's never a successful thing um because you, yeah, you, like, you find out things you don't like about each other as well Plus, it's a, it's a job interview, basically. If you're going on a yeah. first date with someone, if you're going out with somebody as a friend, if you're both going to a shared interest, you're going to mm -hmm. make each other laugh, probably, and it's not gonna it, you're going to be eating each other's company, and that's when these bonds actually form. So it's very rare that you would go out on some like blind dates and everything. It works with some people, mostly it doesn't, because you know two people have thought, you know, this might work. We've got a lot in common. Let's try and force this, but it. it it doesn't happen like that. So make make friends with a lot of people, and nine times it will probably happen from that. Yeah. Date, it's good. Dating, yeah, we're not bad. dating sites are forced and awkward, and I, I certainly have never ended up with anybody I've been on a first date with. There's, there's there's been two kind of significant loves of my life, shall we say? The first one, the Talk. first thing I said to him was pull my finger, and oh. um, we became we just made each other laugh the whole time. Did you fart it's, as well? Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, big oh, ripper it was. Yeah, oh, no. no. He, <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been like, I'm just gonna, go, I'm just gonna go to the toilet, and you'd have never seen me again. <laughs> uh, well, luckily it was his sense of humour. The, the second one, mm. uh, we were both drunk and hanging out. The first thing, like, he crossed the road and honked my boob, and I was just so taken aback. I wouldn't necessarily. That's not a good that tactic. No, no, that no, was no. yeah. Make sure you know your audience were there, but. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, don't don't use that one. But you know, just be funny, be yourself. Don't put yourself under any pressure. Don't think the, of ul- it as the ultimate I need advice to... is be yourself. Because if if not, the, the 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 veil that you've got, this pretend veil, yeah, who will disappear. Are you? It'll it'll disappear, and they'll re- they'll realize eventually down the line that you were making that shit up. You were not being true to yourself. So just be you. Yeah, I have to deal with that. With, I have to deal with that with Pip. We met on a dating site, and she pretended she was fucking normal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> poor bugger. I know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, actually, we, we, we met on a dating site, but we, we met on OKCupid. Okay um, yeah, they're the good ones, aren't they? One of the good uh, ones. Yeah, OKCupid okay I've found was better for finding someone. It is romance, isn't it? Not just a shag. Yeah, but also like when me, me, and, Pep, me and Pep kind of matched on it, um, we talked for about two weeks before we had a date. So again, a little, like bit, a little bit like Stig's thing. It's like, you know, we actually knew each other quite well. And the week that we had our first date, like we had our first date on Wednesday or something like that, just like a chill pint after work. Um, on the Monday night, we sp- spoke on the phone to each other for the first time. I think we were on the phone for like two and a half hours. Mm. So wow. like we'd already talked a fair bit before the first date. And the first date was based on the meeting to go, oh yeah, yeah, you're not an actual monster. I'm not an actual monster. Great, yeah. we get on with each other. We already had that kind of basis to say that we got on with each other first and we did make each other laugh. Um, so yeah, it's important. yeah, so it's that it's that kind of friend. But I also, I kind of approached a lot of the kind of even when I was on like Tinder or Grinder or whatever, I was approaching it from like just finding people to talk to. I wasn't approaching yeah. it on like finding a date or getting me leg over or anything like that. It was just like I was lo- that just happens. <laughs> it sometimes happens, but I was yeah. um, lonely effectively because I was just uh, just freshly divorced and I was trying to find my way in the world yeah and I I mean I got married I got married at 22 so I didn't really know anything about myself as a single person so Mm -hmm. I was just talking to people went on a couple of dates most of them didn't work out but I had some fun experiences got some fun stories never going on a blind date I went on one blind date between my divorce and meeting Pip and that was um, uh, I I walked I, I got to the bar early Sat there, waited, ordered some drinks. She walked in, took one look at me, laughed, and walked out. Oh god! It was the first. Yeah, she, I know why she laughed because she thought there's no way I can pull in. Oh, don't that's why she don't laughed. Say that, Shane. That's why she laughed. That, You're very handsome. That was the first. That was the first date that I had after I left my ex-wife. That and one. I bet you were like, "Fuck this, single forever." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, oh, "Okay, time for me to become an incel." No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are other yeah. places though as well, like what Candy had said about um, if you want to just go and try and make friends with things. There's, there are websites for finding groups, yeah. like like yeah, you've done Kurt with the improv group. You know, there might not be someone there for like meet you, up romantically, meet companion up, sites. Yeah, but yeah, you can find those sites that maybe those are a bit easier to go than rather than do the first date thing. But I'll just join a band, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Well, and just, one final thing to add like, with that is just the, the person you're talking to might be just as nervous as you are as well so don't judge yeah, them exactly. too harshly on saying something a little bit weird because they're probably just nervous too yeah yeah have we got more uh yes yeah, so uh next up uh dear biggie uh, my wife just doesn't shut up about the shelves in the kitchen that need fixing. She goes on and on and on. And I just don't even feel like getting her anything for Valentine's. So she doesn't appreciate anything else I do. Any advice needed? A non. Fix the fucking shelves. Yeah, I mean. I can't so, give advice. Put those shelves up, Poodles. Poodles. So. <laughs> it's not me. It's not put me. the shelves up. It's not me. I've got some good. S- no more nails in my house. It's perfect. It's for what those. I would do is. You know, go to something like B&Q, go and get all the tools that you need for the job, um, have a crack at it, get all the measurements. I mean, it's going to get messy, a messy, potentially bloody. It's going to happen. But once you've done the job, stand back, look at what, the work you've done, be proud, and then go and get someone to put the shelves up. Wow. <laughs> Swiss Tony over here. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Next. <laughs> 
I think that's it for the um, advice, the uh, stuff that's... Oh, don't we have one more here? Someone oh. called Jupiter Storm. My partner mm -hmm. is an avid gamer. On V-Day, how can I best resemble a video game so you might play me to completion? From Anonymous, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, well, I know what I know that I know what Pip looks like. Yeah, um, yeah. partner... Really likes big titted anime girls, I've heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard this. <laughs> I've heard this as well. I've heard this. Oh, um, I think, Pip, if Stand you can dress up as a hell ghost, I'd nail it. Type this into Google, Pip. Uh, Lady Dimitrescu cosplay <laughs> outfit. <laughs> and you've won. You've done it. He'll be happy then. He'll there be happy. Go. There you go. You've done it. If she ever did that, oodles, everyone wants to be stepped on. If she ever did that, oodles, next time you came up here, I would admit I would, I would get a dress up like that. And you would be broken. I'd die. <laughs> I'd die. Just be a broken man. Walk into the kitchen and just crumple to the floor. <laughs> you would. Yeah. <laughs> like jelly. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I'd be stood at bottom of the stairs going, no! And I'd have to run off like Ethan. Ah! Running away with my gun <laughs> in my <me> pants. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, Super Nasty Cat's also. Uh, oh, there's more. With one. They're just flying yeah. through now. Are they? Fucking hell. It's our last Valentine's Day without a baby, hopefully. So, any advice on future Valentine's Days as a family rather than a couple will be much appreciated. Yeah, much I, can, I can answer that one perfectly, and I'm sure Stig can as well. Send them off to someone else's house for Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> yep. It's perfect. It still works. Like, nothing ever happened. <laughs> Or take the baby with you to whichever fancy restaurant you want to go in. You'll clear the restaurant with a screaming baby and you'll have the best service ever. Uh, unfortunately, some fancy restaurants will ask you to leave. We've done um, that before. Um, no, I was just because yeah, you walked really? in there, Rudolph. Not, not to yep. be... Not to be... I, I know... <laughs> like, not to be jokey about it or anything, but generally one of the best Valentine's days I've had, even since our uh, the eldest was born, was the time that she went off stay yeah. with the grandparents and we just went yeah. out and had a night together in your you forget a little bit don't you you yeah. forget about it all like, and you just you, you, you genuinely you're young again you, you, you do want those nights without them I know it's kind of yeah. fun to say oh next year it'll be with them and stuff but yeah it's probably you'll enjoy it more just yeah knowing that you can have a nice night you can together. kiss goodbye to shagging for a good few years I can promise you that Natty <laughs> <laughs> And you'll still Trust be talking me. about the child during dinner anyway. Yeah, you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's genuine advice, mate. You need to get that good family member slash care provider or a babysitter. I'll do it. It'll be, and trust me, you'll just have one of those nights where... Are you sure one of us will look after the baby while you're out? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Not doing that ever again. No, no, no. Is that the love <laughs> advice? Almost. Oh god, this man Finally, this coming through. This Jupiter storm came with the final one. I'd love to know what each of the pod members would think of. Would be A, the perfect Valentine's Day to receive and B, perfect gift to give. Uh, blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the answer. Does, does Pip Take want that a blowjob? <laughs> if she wants one. If she wants one. The perfect Blow gift for me way. to receive and the perfect yep. gift for my wife to give. Yes, because they <laughs> love doing it. Don't they, Candy? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's, that's my Everyone's answer. Different. I don't honestly, want any, I don't so. want gifts. I don't know. I want, yeah. I want head. <laughs> we've generally given up on we've generally given up on giving gifts now and the it, if we do do something, it's what I mentioned earlier, and it's getting the kids away and doing something yeah. together. <laughs> That's the gift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the gift. The perfect yeah. per Just perfect one for me for both answers would be for Valentine's Day not to exist because it pisses me off. I'm not, you don't like <laughs> it, are you? I'm, I'm not a romantic person. I never really have been, and it's kind of like I, I don't need a day of the year to prove to my partner that I love her. You know? Because you love her 365 days a year. Exactly. Yeah. I buy yeah, Kurt flowers randomly all the time. Like, it's all need to be just on one. I do when they've got bollocks. yellow stickers on them. I get the whoopsie flowers. <laughs> <laughs> the ones with the you get the ones with the yellow reduced sticker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I rip out these. Like. They'll, only, they'll only last two days. Yeah, put that in some end of ours. Mm. <laughs> I'd like one of those. You know, you can get the bouquets of flowers made of like fifty pound notes. That'd be right. I have and seen that. And then also run yeah. me a bath and make tea. 
Do you, do, you, do you like getting in the bath with people? Because we've got a big bath, us, and we've got in the bath together multiple times. I don't think there's times. any bath big enough to get me and somebody else in, to be honest. Can I don't you, know, maybe if I wasn't we, on the tap We used end. to have a massive bath <laughs> at our old place. We, we could both get in, but the, no, we can't do it in this one where we live now. We've got a massive corner bath, us. I could get all fucking family in if I wanted to. The thing is, the, the tide starts going with you, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> yes. And then always does. somebody always puts like the soap on their head to make a mohawk or a beard or something. The rubber duck yeah. gets involved and it's not actually that sexy really. No, it's not. There's nothing <laughs> sexy about two people f- flopping about in a bath at all. <laughs> can, it's just Gandhi, fun. Gandhi, is your perfect Valentine's Day just to have someone give you a night <laughs> off from like being an adult? Yeah. <laughs> Fix oh, your toilet while they're at it. Fix my. We, oh we, my god, yeah. If we anyone. set Candy to a play world, like a, a one of them soft play areas for day. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. And uh, yeah, fix my toilet and then run me a bath. Yeah. Oh, can we do that? Oh, and if clean we, my kitchen. If we do a one of the some community meetup, can we rent a soft yeah. play area? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I, no I kids think, allowed. I think if we do a yeah. modern escape as a community meetup, it's to fucking clean Candy's flat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could like all what? go around and have a little spruce up. Like one of the, oh, with a version of Laser Quest. Yeah, it'll no, be trying to stick the, toilet, stick the toilet down with no more nails. <laughs> I'm not doing Laser Quest. I'll be sweating my me, me bag off when I'm on stage then. I'll be sniping everyone. Fuck you. No. Fuck no. you. Is that the end of the love? It is. Excellent. Now, I blow let's my load. Do, That's it. Let, let's do Nexus. Come on, we're running out of time, folks. Christ, we've been recording for an hour and we haven't done the Nexus yet. <laughs> Uh, we'll do a quick Nexus. We'll we'll do more Nexus in the Patreon segment, so don't worry. We'll do a quick one. So, uh, word of warning before we go into the Nexus, we will be talking about Hogwarts Legacy this week. If you are... I, I, I know about the controversy. If you don't want to listen, I won't be offended, and you can skip all the way to the main topic. But there's your warning. Okay. So, Candy, what have you been up to? Well, as I uh, mentioned before, I watched the the back rooms. So uh, yeah, after seeing the news about the A twenty four film picking up the YouTube series by a teenager, I wanted to yes. see what it was all about. So um, I checked it out. So it was a creepy pasta from twenty nineteen um, that it originated was. on four chan. <clears throat> a thread asked the users to post the most unsettling images that just felt kind of off. Uh, one of the submissions was the original picture of the back rooms, <sighs> um, and it was a large carpeted open room with yellow wallpaper and fluorescent lighting. Mm. And um, another user posted the description of the picture. If you're not careful and you know clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz, and approximately Mm -hmm. 600 square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby because it sure as hell has heard you. Um... So a YouTube short video called The Backrooms was released by then 16-year-old Kane Pixels, as his name is on YouTube. It was presented as a 1990s found footage VHS tape depicting a young filmmaker accidentally glitching through reality and finding himself in the backrooms, which, (laughs) unlike the photo, it's uh, a yellow-walled, unending liminal space. Liminal space Mm -hmm. is basically what would normally be a crowd area completely deserted, so things sort of like a government building or a warehouse, that kind of thing. Um, It's made up of millions of miles and multiple layers of rooms and corridors that appear to define normal time and physics. And also there's a screaming robot monster after you. The short went viral and picked up some amazing reviews. It was described as the scariest video on the internet by WPSD, whilst Taku described it as an analog horror. PC Gamer compared its various levels to HP Lovecraft's Relais. And the city in the manga Blame, describing it as an uncanny valley sort of place. Dread Central and Nerdist compared it to the game Control, which I wholeheartedly agree with. In fact, that's um, basically liminal space. The game, isn't it? It is. <laughs> uh, in fact, when I reviewed Severance, I think I compared that to Control. And yeah. while I was researching the backrooms, Dan Erickson, the creator of Severance, cited it as one of his many influences whilst working on the series. Um, so following the success of the original short, Kane expanded the backroom stories into a series of 16 shorts ranging between um, a minute and 16 minutes ish each and introduced a plot linking the shorts together, which culminates with the mysterious disappearance and subsequent de- death of one of the employees of Async, which is a company who are experimenting with space and time and wish to use the area as a sort of kind of like an extra space for the USA for storage and living, leisure, all sorts. 
And yeah, mm. it, it, it is creepy. The, the horror doesn't come from anything you see necessarily, but the general feeling of an ease and the unknown. Um, the near constant use of this acidic yellow on the walls is at odds with a traditional hor- horror, but combine that with a piercing, horrible buzzing of the overpowering. It's because it's well lit, isn't it? It's not yeah. what you consider frightening. But you can see everything, yeah. 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 Um, it's just cla- claustrophobic and it just makes for this really uneasy kind of sensation. Like, like being at the dentist, you know, the light's constantly in your face. Mm, um, good, the- good example. The footage, um, it's not made on a set. The footage was created completely in Blender, which is the free 3D software and After Effects. Um, and it was completed by Kane in a month. And as you heard in the news earlier, A24 have picked up the series to adapt into a film by um, and directed by Kane Parson during his summer holidays. Wow. Talented little bugger. Ooh. Yeah. But it, yeah is, it is one of those things that... I remember reading up on the back rooms and and then I got into the um what's that other the, oh, the, the there was another 4 chan thing um APC is it SP, like? uh, SCP SCP that's it I got into them as well and they were really frightening mm. they were all creepy pastors weren't they with the SCP stuff they spun off into like a whole just a whole thing didn't it community writing project oh, it, some of them were frightening but yeah I I, I I love. I, I genuinely love that shit. It's like it's like modern like myth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's so fucking it's presented cool, so man. well as well because it's it is the found footage thing, which hasn't been done mm. successfully. I don't think in a in a while. Just trying to think of the, the last sort of found footage paranormal activity, isn't it? Yeah. VHS was good. Yeah. VHS, yeah. But yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily describe this as a horror, though. It's more of a sort of horror sci-fi, I think. Psychological. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But there's Very there's, a, there's a proper crop of like really young kids with Blender specifically making these short films. They're like fucked this. up. <laughs> yeah, they're all fucked up. There's there's another one by um I looked for his name earlier William Langdon. Um, he's just he's 14 and he made this short called The Drink and he's made a series of shorts in Blender and just it's just absolutely unreal what they're doing like how long have they had in their lives to learn this software you know like you yeah, think, no. yeah. even after <laughs> at 14, 14 years, i've not even i've not even used a computer at 14 exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah no it's i struggle incredible. with netflix <laughs> but it's exciting yeah, though it is exciting to see that you know that there is a um there is a an amazing talent that's coming up with I kids that are putting the time into it time and effort into it awesome 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 uh, Iggy, what have been doing? Yeah, I just went to uh, my mate M. Flem's house uh, earlier in the week, and we, instead of playing oh, cards, right. I thought we'd play something different. And uh, I can't remember if you guys chatted about this or not, but I played Back for Blood for the first time. I don't I know what it is. I, th- I talked a little bit about that when it first came out, but I never played it enough to really like, review it. Yeah, I've played it a few times. What yeah, is it? just... It's uh, basically a first-person shooter game, but it's, it's the main crux of it is it's um, almost like a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead, if you ever played that. Oh, yeah, I love Left 4 Dead. Yeah. So it's, it's so supposed it. to be, Left obviously, Dead Loved it. for four people to co-op. We only played it with two of us and two bots, but, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really good shooter. It's all against zombie creature things that are attacking you, and you've basically got to work together, clear the areas, and move on to the next stage, and you get unlocks and... This thing you get like halfway you... house in between levels and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so Left you can stock, oh, restock and stuff like that. One of my favourite Xbox games, that Left 4 Dead. Oh. Yeah, really, really, really enjoyed it. it. It was just something different to play. It gets a bit intense at times. My only issue is that um, because we're quite good at first person shooters, we had it on Veteran, um, which obviously means that you can, uh, Friendly Fire is on. And then when you've got two <laughs> AI bots running around as well, they tend to get shooting in your way. You. And you're shooting them more than they shoot you because. <laughs> just don't know how to stay out of your bloody uh, aim. But yeah, just a really cool um, shoot. I really enjoyed it. I'd like to play it with four. I think that'd be really cool with really What's it available? well-organized team. Uh, we play it on PS5. It's on Xbox X. I assume uh, it's on Nintendo, is it? I guess, because that's where Left 4 Dead came from, wasn't it? Or am I uh, wrong? No, it's Xbox. It's on oh, it's Pass, Xbox. Said, it? PC, wasn't it, originally Left 4 Dead? Xbox. It's one of oh, those. there you go. Then. It's, yeah. a, it's a Valve I never game, played the original. Yeah, but it's... Is uh, it Valve? Uh, no, it's this was no, Valve by did Left 4 Dead. That's what I mean. Turtle Rock Studios, and oh, uh, produced, Rock. published by Warner Brothers. Oh, but yeah, I really enjoyed. It. Just it's a really 
cool shooter. Uh, it's got obviously different types of enemies, the bigger and stronger, all that kind like of thing. Like the witch. Remember the witch from Left 4 Dead? <laughs> that I haven't played awful, it. That. No, it's the first time I've played this kind of thing. There's it's, a, it's a great big. scene in this. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, Biggie, it's great that you've gotten into this because um, about a week ago the uh, the devs announced they're not putting any more content into the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not bothered about that. Timely honestly. as ever. Just, this is a little pause between the seasons of COD, I guess. But um, there's a particularly cool scene um, in Act 2, I think it is, where you get asked to go into a bar. And there's loads of stuff there. And when you get in there, you suddenly realise there is a lot of stuff for us to pick up here. Shit is about to kick off. And there's a jukebox oh, yeah. in there, and you have to put some of your uh, found coppers, as the coinage is called, and you have to put it into um, a jukebox and then protect that as it literally starts playing loud, heavy metal music, including the fantastic Ace of Spades came out. And there's mm-hmm. nothing better than gunning down a load of zombies while you've got Ace of Spades blaring in your earphones. It was, uh, Should have been yeah. Queen, though, shouldn't it? Don't stop me now. Yeah, you got that too, yeah. <laughs> no, that would have been better. That would have been better. But it's got a very cool um, AI system called the Game Director, which dynamically modifies the environment, placement of enemies, etc. So basically, every time you play the game, it's never quite the same each time. Yeah. It's cool. I'm into it, but if they're not spotting it anymore, I'm not going to bother. Done and done. Cool, 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 cool. Gadget, you've been doing, mate. Uh, so I finished Dead Space this week. Fucking brilliant. Everyone plays. Yes. Absolutely marvellous game. I'm going to, um, mate. I'm going to. It's the definitive version of that game. It's just so good. Um, and I did a completionist run as well. I think I've got most of the achievements. I just need to finish it on... And you get a couple of things and then get um, do it on impossible mode, and then I think I've platinumed it. Oh, there's an impossible mode. Yeah, there's an impossible mode. And a new game plus, so you can just go through the early game stomping shit. Nice. Um But what I want, the main thing I want to talk about is... So I've been playing a game um, by uh, people who de- developed some of the some of the best Lord of the Rings games because they developed Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Shadow of War. So this is a game by Monolith. Yes, but it isn't those games. It's a oh. game from 1997. Oh, it's their second game that they released called Claw. And now this is the PC game. Yes, this is Pip's favorite this. favorite game ever, and I downloaded it and got it working on the Steam Deck for her. It's a game she played as a kid this. on a little home PC. Um. Mm. In this game, you play a famous cat pirate, Captain Nathaniel Joseph Claw, who is imprisoned by the Cocker Spaniards <laughs> <laughs> after they attack and sink his ship. And he escapes, and he has to get the uh, gems to the nine gems for the um, amulet of nine lives that will help him do the thing. I think it, it is that side scroll I'm thinking of, isn't it? Yeah, it's a side scroller. Um, yeah, I played this in hospital once when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I can categorically say this is the most annoying game I've ever fucking played. <laughs> oh, it's good. <laughs> it's, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful game. It's got that kind of 90s um, art style. Yeah. It's really Earthworm well rendered. Earthworm Jim-esque. Yeah, Earthworm Jim-esque. Very cartoony, very cute. The sound effects are good. Music is good. Presentation is good. But the platforming mechanics are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Some of the early levels make the white fucking palace uh, look easy. Give up. No, seriously, Give some up. of the shit is awful. Like I, like I, Pip has the uh, fucking muscle memory for this one. She's played this game inside and out for twenty six years. She knows this. Probably game. with the keyboard as well. Probably with the keyboard, yeah. But she, she, she's been playing it for like two weeks on my Steam Deck and absolutely just like rinsed it, just speed running the damn. You need thing. to get her Aladdin and stuff like that as well. Oh, King, but, you know, the- fuck me! It is so difficult because it is bullshit. There is so much bullshit in this game. For instance. You go to do a precision platforming puzzle where the, the, the platforms are like fading in and out of existence on a timer, mm-hmm. and you, you go da, 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 in the right rhythm. Fine, that's tricky enough, you, but you've, you, know, you can get your platform mechanics going in. So what does the game decide to do? Put enemies off screen that can shoot you. When you get shot, you get stun locked. <laughs> you fall down to your it death. Or have fucking yeah. um, like arrow traps coming out of the side walls that you can't see when you start the jump up. And then you get caught, stun locked, and fall to the floor. You get bosses. Hey, that's what it's like being a pirate. You don't understand. Yeah, bosses that hit you from <laughs> off screen. Like, how are you supposed to react to anything in this game? It's. F- I made. I made it through twelve of the fourteen levels before I went. Nah, fuck it. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> At the point where I'm asking Pip for help to get through some platforming puzzle, I'm like, I, nah, I, I just, I can't, I can't accept She's this. She's a better anymore. gamer than you. At this game, definitely. Like, Why do you get oh, her on she's... Elden Ring after this? <laughs> she can speed run this or something, can't she? Oh yeah, yeah, she can absolutely blast through it. 
I mean, she's I, probably on the on the on the, on the top tables because no one else has fucking tried speedrunning it. <laughs> she's probably playing it right now, to be honest. Um, she's probably number one in world. Oh god, I, it, it's one of those things. I get why she likes it, and I get why people like it, and it has become a bit of a cult classic. And it's a very pretty yeah. game. It's a very charming game, but it's mechanically and design based. It's fucking awful. And like, I don't <laughs> mind hard games. I like hard games, but I don't like games where they just bullshit you. Give me platforming I'm glad you challenges, your mate. Give me platforming challenges. Great. Don't fire shit at me off screen with no sound cue that I can't hear that knocks me off. Has Pip played Rayman Legends? Ooh. No, but I am tempt- I'm tempted to see if she'll play that one because I think she'd like it. Because then, then you can say she's this like is that. how jumping mechanics <laughs> work. This, yeah. this is how this is how it was, should be done. There was a, there was a and you can play that co-op. There was a few, yes. few times when I was playing it um, that I did get into the rhythm of the platforming, and when the platforming works, it's great. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. they do think so. Like you get very used to the the rhythm of like um, platforms that kind of come in and come out of the level, um, mm-hmm. and then it then it does jazz platforming where then they all get syncopated. Yeah, but it's in it's immediately <laughs> after you've done the long jumping puzzle with a set rhythm. And then it changes the rhythm. I'm like, no, 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 no don't give me staccato four. platforming. Don't give me four four, <laughs> then go into seven eight. No, I'm not. I can't count that. It's oh my god. It, it's no. I can't. I can't. So you recommend this. it for everyone then, yeah? If you're a fucking sadist, aye. <laughs> I was just watching a video of it then while you're talking about it. Yeah, <clears> I did like ass. how for a game from '97 it had like little animated. Yeah. Like videos, yeah. Like oh, the c- cutscenes are in it are great. Like I say, yeah. the presentation of it's fabulous. It looks and sounds mm. brilliant. One of the best looking games from nineteen ninety seven that I've played. Like if you think other mm. games from nineteen ninety seven, Half Life, like Half Life was a great three D game, but it uh, looks hasn't aged well. It's Rough. Two, at least two D yeah. stuff has aged better. But the mecha- yeah. oh, it's so difficult to play with the mechanics. It might be easier with a keyboard rather than playing with the, the uh, D pad yeah. on a Steam Deck. But even so. Um, yeah, yeah. Get her on Rayman Legends. I think she'd like that because it reminds me of that. Yeah, I might try that. But actually. better. I wonder how much that is. is that on Steam yet? It's on everything. Yeah, we'll yeah. Play the shit out. Of- it's a, it's an U- Ubisoft game though, so it might not be on Steam. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, excellent. Claw. Oh. From 1997. Check it out, guys. On modern <laughs> escapism. Well, get it from Electronics <laughs> Boutique today. I was, I was going to talk about Legend of Vox in a season two, but Pip insisted that I talk about it, so. Perfect, perfect. She's executive producer of this episode. How do you say the name of that show, Gadget? Vox Machina. Oh, don't. <laughs> Not as Udo's thought, it was Fox Machina. <laughs> no, Fox Machina. <laughs> or oh, whatever you said, I can't remember. I can't remember, but I, I didn't know what you were talking about for weeks. I'm going, hmm, yeah. He's on about foxes. <laughs> He's talking about foxes. <laughs> now I know, and I've watched that first episode, and it's good. Good. Good, good. Stick, you'll be doing. Um, just a quick one before I go into my main one because I just want to mention this. Um, yeah. I finished off watching season three of His Dark Materials, which was the oh, BBC yeah. HBO um, kind of co-production adaptation of Philip Pullman's trilogy, and it was fucking brilliant and exactly what I wanted from these books. Um, the first two, and they didn't shy away from the absolute craziness. Of book three either, because book three goes into some weird places, some places which if they'd eventually got there in the film, they'd have bottled. Hollywood would have absolutely bottled it. What they do in this film, uh, in the series. So I'm glad that we got this TV series because it deserved to be done properly. And mm. uh, yeah, I just thought it was great. And the last episode, which kind of all ties things in together, um, was just. Really beautifully done. Daphne Keane and Amir Wilson, perfect for Will and Lyra. Like, just the ending just absolutely killed me, made me cry. So, oh, wow. Yeah, like it was beautifully done and exactly what I wanted from one of my favorite, like, book trilogies ever. So, yeah. I'm very happy this exists after the absolute travesty that the Golden Compass. Mm. Uh, but the main thing that I did this week was I listen to an audio drama a Spotify exclusive audio drama called Mm. Harley Quinn and the Joker Sound Mind this is shot to number one on Spotify knocking off our old friend Joe Rogan yes Uh, and yeah this is it's a 
it's a Harley Quinn and Joker origin story. Let's just because that's exactly what we needed. Another one of them. But it's actually pretty. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Um, it's a different take on it. Uh, it stars Christina Ricci as the voice of Harley Quinn. Or for the majority oh. of this, she's Harley and Quinzel. She, she doesn't really kind of. Yeah, she's more in the Doctor form on this. It's more of a. It's a seven-part series. Each episode's only about half an hour. Uh, the setup to this is obviously she's working at Arkham Asylum. She's been assigned different people there, and eventually she gets pitch patient J after he drives all the other doctors away. See, this is the Joker. It's played by Mr. Billy, J. Yeah, played by Billy Magnuson. And <clears throat> there's a bit of a side story going on for her. Her her father's ill. He's in hospital. He needs um, a procedure doing, but she can't afford the can't afford it. So things happen. Um, won't really go into the spoilers of that. But yeah, as an audio drama, I actually quite enjoyed it. I blasted through it all in one afternoon at work, just at one after the other, say seven episodes. Uh, Christina Ricci does a really good Harley Quinn. It's she's just normal because she doesn't go into that whole you know what you associate Harley Quinn with that kind of voice and hi mr j that kind of yeah there's, there's <laughs> none of that like she doesn't do that she just is well because like I say she's more highly in quinzel in this and did uh, um paul dini have anything to do with this because he invented her and he usually has when it comes to anything that's not films he usually has input in um you know. i have no idea let me have a look produced by no no oh wow He's just letting um, it go now, letting her go, letting her fly, fly, fly. Unless he's got writing credits. No, it's not. It's written by Matthew wow. Darby and Rachel uh, Kong. So, no. There you um, go. Yeah, I also really liked Billy Magnuson's Joker. Again, it isn't that typical Joker. He, for the vast majority of this, he speaks normally. And I actually found that quite off-putting in a way because the Joker being normal and not having them that high pitched <laughs> crazy Mark Hamill voice, or that you know that one, you know how Heath Ledger kind of goes into that gruffly. You want to know how I got these scars? Yeah, that like <laughs> yeah, that kind of voice. <laughs> Sounds for like the, penguin, doesn't he? For the majority <laughs> of this, he, he's kind of fine. Every now and again, it, depending on his emotions, he switches it on. So depending, oh, that's on what, cool. Depending on what the situation is, like he might go into that bit of a like cackling, or he might go into that more of a menacing, like. What about the Jared Le- Leto? Ah, ah, ah! No, no, no! Ah, it's just very, far, very <laughs> far away from that. <laughs> but yeah, funny. this this has um, there's there's a Bruce Wayne Batman in here. There's a Arnold Wesker slash the ventriloquist is kind of a bit yeah, of a side nice. story for Harley Quinn in in there and. I, yeah, I just enjoyed it. It was really well acted, decent sound design. It was up there with the level of sound design that we got from the Callisto Protocol one. But Not the game. In terms of the acting, <laughs> I just I just kind of really enjoyed it and really went along the ride for this little story that they've told. Uh, I would be quite happy to, for them to do a second part, and I'd definitely just give it a listen to. Cool, I will. I will. Yeah, I mean, that. some people might not enjoy it, like because I know that when it comes to doing different adaptations of like Batman things, it's that's not my Harley Quinn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not my Harley Quinn. It's not my Joker. They are very different. <laughs> it's, I think I found this a very different take on the Joker. Like I said, he does pop into those moments, but he's very, he's a very vulnerable Joker. Like mm. he really like lets his guard down in this. It's more a. It's more her twisting him and manipulating him wow. than the other way around. Bang into so, it. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Cool. Cool. Hey, it's Gadget in the edit here. Just slipping in quickly. The next review is for Hogwarts Legacy. We're very aware that there is a lot of feelings on both sides of the argument about this one. The review is just simply talking about the game. However, if you don't want to hear anything about Hogwarts Legacy, either via spoilers or because you have an objection to the game, that is absolutely fine. Skip ahead to one hour and 38 minutes. Right. Um, yes, I have been playing all since Friday. Hogwarts Legacy. I've, you've been playing it as well, Stig, haven't That's you? That's the other bit. thing I've been doing, yeah. Yes. Um, again, like I said, I'm aware of the controversy surrounding this game, but I'm going to talk about it. Well, that it's a, a good game. game. <laughs> it's a good game. It's a good game. I am on 
about eight hours, I, I want to say, about eight hours, roughly. Um, I don't know how far you've got into it, Stig. I know you haven't had much time. Um, I don't know, because I've just spent so much just wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, to, to, to let people stuff. know that... <laughs> That don't know what type of game this is. In my head, it feels like a mixture between like Fable and uh, Bully. Remember Bully? Yeah. That's what it feels like to me. It's an open world kind of RPG, kind of just open world sandbox Hogwarts experience. Now, as you all know, I am very new to this universe. So I feel like an absolute alien playing this. I don't know what anything is, but... <laughs> I still think it's quite accessible for someone that doesn't know this this world because there's, there's plenty of stuff I can read up on it, you know what I mean? Um, from, from the get-go, the, it, it lets you create a character. Uh, I, I think you're 16-year-old in it, aren't you? Fifth year? Fifth year, yeah. So Yeah, so yeah. 15, 16. Yeah, so the fifth year is just somehow managed to only just get accepted into Hogwarts. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be some backstory on to why that's happened, but I haven't had it yet. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming Hogwarts is high school, isn't it? Pretty much. So you're starting start like 11. Se- yeah, eleven year old. That's what I thought. But um, yeah, you, you go in and it kicks. And this is I'll, I'll only spoil plot wise the first like half hour of the game. You 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 go into this fucking magical carriage with this professor. And there's no horses on this carriage. It's just, it's just invisible Testrals, carriage. Mate. And and then and then a dragon turns up and bites you, mate. <laughs> he just fuck, <laughs> he just fucks off. And then you're flying, and then you're dropped into like a landscape in Scotland. And then it feels like it feels like a typical journey to Scotland. No, no, the actual <laughs> gameplay. It feels like fable Aww. so fucking much. So much like like Fable Two. I love Fable Two. It feels like that. Don't but then tell the me this. I can't afford it yet. <laughs> the combat's like Elden Ring a little bit because you're using the triggers to do your. It's, the whole combat is um it's wand based. I don't know if there's a proper word. Magic. It's magic. magic <laughs> so you're not idea. actually. You don't you don't hit anyone. You don't use axes or anything like. That. It's all. But you'd, you'd think to yourself like, how can that be fun? It really sticking it good the combat. Yeah, yeah. I mean I've it's not done really good loads of combat yet, but I did. I haven't done loads. I um done the there's a the troll fight early on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've done that, but it's just doing the magic. Um, it's just, just and it's so cool how he's whipping his yeah. his, his wrist around and, and it's I don't, I don't there's something real, I don't know if the if these wand battles are like this in the film, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's it's almost it, it feels as good to me as how it felt to have a really good Star Wars lightsaber duel on some of the Star Wars games. Yeah, it's just satisfying as fuck. And I, I've got I've got spells and I'm, forgive me, I don't know the names of spells, but I'm I'm like levitating things and I'm flinging them away like I've got the Force and I'm pulling them towards me and then I'm just killing them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm doing loads of fucking. <laughs> It's brutal. It's it's kind of like the com. I like I've put it on the hard mode because I thought, oh, it'll be a baby game. It's difficult. The game's difficult, the combat wise. But you, you you can choose the options. But yeah, you you're going through it and then you end up at Hogwarts. And I I've had to stop myself saying Hogwarts because <laughs> I'm from West Yorkshire and we say Warts instead of. <laughs> so I've really had to train myself to call it Hogwarts, so people know what I'm saying. But yeah, you end up at this school and. It's fast in its dig. It's just vast. Massive. I don't know if it's accurate to the films at all. More or less. It's it's fucking stunning. Um, and then you and then it turns into it, from fable. It turns into bully. Then for a bit, you've got to go to school and stuff and meet your friends. And I got I got this hat got put on my head and. The hat talked to me. Believe it or not, guys, the hat spoke to me. I love how you're just like... discovering all that something that's been around for about 25 years. The hat spoke to me and asked me questions, and it was like, Slytherin! <laughs> so it turns out I'm in that. And I knew you'd be you, a can, you, can, you, you can actually choose against what the hat says, can't you? But I thought, I'm going to go with the hat. And yeah, and you go meet meet your new pals, and so it's like boarding school. Hogwarts is boarding school, mm-hmm. and it's just it's just a good game. And then when it stops being bully for a while, it becomes a it's 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 a dressing up your doll game, isn't it? 
<laughs> oh yeah, clothes. I'm loving, I'm clothes. loving finding clothes and being like, oh yeah, that looks better. Yeah. That looks better. And oh, it's then, like the but, division. It does. Like, <laughs> no, mate, it is. It, it is, is like that. It is like and, the division. Unlike Destiny as well, like with the legendary yeah. and suit, like different coloured, like uh, yeah stuff. And you're like, oh, but I look great in this. But yeah, this. But thing, you don't look. Go- these so glasses look like, stupid. Give me a massive boost. <laughs> so I'm going to walk around with these stupid glasses. Yeah. On. <laughs> I've noticed, like, when because everyone's in school uniform and I'm there looking like yeah. a fucking absolute badass. <laughs> so in my head, I've, I've made like this this fake role play that I'm an undercover 21 Jump Street policeman <laughs> and I'm trying to investigate a poaching ring just to make to make sense in my head that that's why I'm there because my character talks like an adult. <laughs> he looks a bit like an adult. <laughs> And he wears fucking evil wizard clothes. <laughs> yeah. Fucking God. I mean, it's just, I, it's just a genuinely good game so far. I lost an hour and a half to it last night, literally just wandering around Hogwarts, doing mm. nothing but wandering around Hogwarts, going, oh, there's a staircase here. Where's that go? Oh, look, there's a, there's a door in the corner over there. Go through there. I'm, I'm, Where's that dog going? Now I'm on the other side of the castle, and you look down and go, oh, there's the boatyard. No spo- I'm not going to yeah, spoil it. It's just... That's where that happens. Go down there, have a little oh. wander around. Oh, look, that's where that happens. And I was just everywhere. And oh, that's I found cool. things that I've posted in the Discord. I can't say it because of you not knowing what it is. <laughs> Take your earphones out for a sec. Okay. This is for candy. Come on. Come on, what is it? I found a snake mosaic on the floor and I followed it and it leads to a certain bathroom. Oh, my God. And I was that's like, so yes, cool. that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh, is she in the bathroom? No, no, she's. Have you stopped? Have you stopped? That because this is set a hundred years before Harry Potter, so that right. has, yeah, that, that I did. I, I did a bit of research yeah. before, and it said there's, it, it doesn't mention the films at all. Because no, cause yes, there has been some confusion in our Discord. We are doing we are doing an Harry Potter series. What have we named it, Candy? Because your name was perfect. What did you call it? Uh, Kenny Potter and uh, no, Ken, Kenny Potter expecto Patreonus. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a patron only series where I'm going to go through and watch the films these guys are the book nerds and the film nerds and they're going to tell me what I'm getting wrong and we're all just going to retrospectively enjoy it and it's going to be fucking fun but yeah um, I, I'm i just really enjoying it like again I'm not that far in it it's, it's, it's weird for me to get a game on a Friday it'd be a Sunday and I've not completed it yet but I'm so distracted by everything. Like, I, I, you don't have to answer this thing, but I'm, I, I'm almost positive that castle's moving about. Like, I can't get my bearings. <laughs> the staircase has moved. No, but I like, I like changing. Oh, like, I'm not sure. Like, if that, that I thought sure that, that was, was there, but now it's not there. <laughs> Do you know what I'm like? What the fuck? The world, the open world, the world is massive. I looked at the world map and I was like. There's so much to do just in Hogwarts and Hogsmeade, and I opened the world map. And I was like, "Fuck, this goes for ages." Yeah, I've got to, oh, so I've got to go Hogsmeade, Hogwarts, but then. I w- I ventured into the Forbidden Forest and I bottled it. I came up against a, a band of dark wizards, smashed them, and I was like, "I'm not going any further because I'm oh, probably going to be I, way under level." <laughs> I will give people a warning. I mean, if you've seen Harry Potter, you probably know this, but there's lots of spiders in this. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they look good, like gadget, like creepy spiders, mate. And, and some of them are bigger than you. I know I've seen the first film, and no. <laughs> <laughs> some some big old spiders, mate. But yeah, it's just good. Like yeah, but I zoomed out of the map, and it's it's all greyed out at the bottom. But you, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, it's fucking huge. But Can't wait to again, get a broomstick. I, I've just got it. I've just got one. Can Can't you play Quidditch in it or no? No, I, I don't know. It. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's no, the there's sport, a storyline thing about it, and they've not said they've said it's not going to be. Is it Quidditch there. Field? Yeah, you can go down. I've, I've, I've wandered around, but you can't play it, which is really mm. annoying. You're right. I've got to. I've got the one. Sorry, go on. Well, I was going to say that, like, as gorgeous as it looks, and as just bringing there all these kind of goosebumps, and you see something, and just like, oh, is that there? That's there. That's there, and all these little mm. things. Are, for someone who's been a fan for so many years to enjoy. The game does have issues. Um, for one, I think that a game that's meant to be this current generation should be able to do things better. Right, I'm not going to compare this to Red Dead Redemption because that is just another level, but <laughs> this is my example. In Red Dead Redemption, when you watch someone eat, they, they actually eat the thing. 
they, they pick it and up. Dis- the, the things disappear the as well, don't they? They disappear they're as, they eat it, as they drink it. In this, you pick up an apple and he holds it and he doesn't even hold it to it. The like, no, character doesn't don't. even hold it to the face and they go, hop, hop, and the apple just disappears out the hand. <laughs> it's magic. Like, that's that stuff that was happening on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Yeah, I agree with you on that. At this point now, some rough you, edges in there. you should be able to animate the character at least taking a bite out of it and it not just disappearing in your hand. It's little minor things like that. I also think that we could really do with more interaction with the students and teachers. You are, there's so many people that you just can't talk to or you bump into and they don't react to you. Like, they just go, hello! Yeah, I just wish there was a bit more like <laughs> interaction with the world. And yeah, there's a few clipping issues here and there. Did they see just one of those sins that I can't believe games still do it, where you don't open the door with your arm, you just run into the door. Yeah. <laughs> you just run into the door. But then again, you could say it's a magic door, couldn't you? It's all magic. I, I just, for me personally, there is a night day scale on a uh, like cycle on yes. this. Yeah. You aren't meant to be out in the halls at a night time. Students have to be Why in the dorm. Students have to be, well, it's a boarding school. Students have to be in bed. They have to be in, in uh, you know, in their dorms oh, yeah. at night time. Yeah. I kind of wish that once it's dark, if you are going to do it, that it was a bit more stealthy rather than just running around with your Like wonder. Bully did. Yeah, you weren't you, allowed out. You were yeah. not allowed out. You're not meant to be there. There should be, there should be in things <laughs> in teachers or things in the hall that you should be able, you, that you have to work around. I just, and then when you go back to the dorms in the night, no one's in bed. There's no characters there. They've all just disappeared. It's tiny, yeah, there is tiny a few bits little like bits that. like yeah. that where you just think, it's just, it's not affecting the gameplay because the gameplay is brilliant. It breaks yeah, the immersion a little, doesn't it? Yeah, immersion, yeah. It's the immersion. It breaks the immersion a little bit. You just can't, where, like all of a sudden it's nighttime, so every character in Hogwarts has disappeared. Just, they're just not yeah, there. No yeah, one's there. Yeah. It's just like, eh, mm. they're not even in the beds. Like it's little things like that that just seem a magic. Bit, yeah, it just takes you out of it a little bit. But other than that, I'm just loving exploring. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's great. I, I reckon it's even better for someone that knows that universe. Mm. <laughs> oh, big you know, time! I used to like that in. Uh... What's be enough for me? The music's really good as well. I like the the themes. That That's come all through. from the music from the movies. Is Most it? Of it? It's really good. When you level up, it goes do 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 do. Yeah, it's all whatever the Harry Potter fucking song is. <laughs> it's all because it's Warner Brothers. It's it's all <clears throat> yeah licensed. They've got all the license to the sounds and the, everything. So, but yeah, that that's enough of that. It's good. And again, I can't really review it yet. I'm eight hours in. It might shit the bed, but it's <laughs> it's just good. I, Candy, if if you liked Fable and Bully, mate. That's basically what it is. I know, and I like Harry Potter. God, I can't afford it. Why? Why do this? <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Sign up to our Patreon. I'm cons- yes, please. So Candy can play Hogwarts. <laughs> there you go. I said it properly. Hogwarts. Right, let's move on to our main topic. It is still the month of love, and we're here to discuss best couples in media. Our, our personal favourites, should we say, because can't really rank couples, can you? Because, like, me and my wife are best in the world, obviously. So, yeah, um, Gadget, what do you bring into the table? I knew you the co- tunnel of love. I knew you'd come to me first, because I'm the one that's fucking struggled with this the most. I have no idea what to put for this one, because I don't really pay attention to couples. Um, <laughs> he doesn't like romance, he's told us earlier. Not romantic. Poor Pip. Um, She's pining for romance. I give her so romance. many, though, if you just... You just Put it into Google and you'll find some. Uh, <laughs> I know. I, I know. I, and, and it was uh, my my original thought that I was going to go with was um, uh, the Washburns from Firefly. Good shout. Good it, shout. Because I I, quite, I I always quite like them because um, she's a she's a military woman. He's a goofball that plays with dinosaur toys, and it's kind of like it's a it's a reversal, especially at the time, a reversal kind of male female dynamics in TV. Very str- yeah, for for that for that age, it was like whoa, yeah. But you never saw it. It's very clear that they very much love each other. Um, yeah. but I've gone in a different direction because okay, I'm a nerd and I went on gaming, and I'll tell you, um, mm. if you Google, if you've gone snake and otacon, I'm gonna kick off. No, 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 because you said I weren't allowed <laughs> it. <laughs> no, no, but. Uh, before before I get into get into the choice that I had, um, 
if you if you Google best couples in gaming, the results are fucking hilarious. Really? They 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 they, they go from games like Silent Hill Two. That's not a happy story about a couple. She was dead. <laughs> he killed her. Start the game. <laughs> he killed her. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Or wow. um, beautiful. Or Witcher Three, where the relationship is thruple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's not many of them where there's actually proper couples. Uh, oh yeah. Po- po- Pokemon, because apparently Ash and Pikachu are a couple. I don't know how that works. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but the the the, the one I'm going—he's to... a mouse. <laughs> you and yes. Garrus. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a romance for the ages. Uh, but what I was what I was going to pick was uh, Cody and May from It Takes Two. And because, and I, I know, Candy, you're playing It Takes Two at the minute. I'm not going to get into kind of the story spoilers around it and all that. But I think, in especially in gaming, they are a really or it's cartoonified, but a reasonably realistic interpretation of a couple that have been together for quite a while and i love the representation and like their lives have kind of gotten between the romance between them like they start the game they're about to get divorced and it's not because of anything oh this is the joseph fairs one yeah um oh, fucking and it's completely blanked at first yeah, it's not because of anything like you know, she's busy at work. He feels a bit under. He's a stay-at-home dad. He feels a bit underwhelmed by things. He's a bit depressed, so his projects in the house kind of gather dust and stuff like that. And she, you know, she has to go to work all the time, go to meetings. So it, he perceives her as being too far away from him. That kind of thing. And throughout the game, you repair this relationship. You go through trials and challenges, which kind of directly tackle the things that each doesn't like about each other, or each that the pulls the two of them apart. And I think it comes down to also the way the actors perform the roles um, and the fact that, you know, you're playing them as like kind of little avatar representations of people, you know, they're they're a clay doll and a wooden Mm -hmm. doll. Um, But the game is so strange and so fantastical and so weird. It allows them to tell a very personal story. Um, And I think as a couple, they work really well. They're both dickheads, don't get me wrong. They are both dickheads. But... (laughs) They're really normal, and I think that's mm. what I like about it. Like, the I'd consider talking about like Nathan and Elena from Uncharted, but there's very little about them that you could say is a normal couple. They've got sass between each other. They're very well performed, but they're a film couple. Whereas these two feel like yeah, and and they they only have a PlayStation One in their house. It's weird. Nah, it's weird. Perverts. <laughs> it's weird. Um, it's weird. <laughs> probably could, probably couldn't afford a PS4 because they had all the sex swings in the back or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, but yeah, C- Cody and May feel like two real people. Like it could be a relationship that any of us have been in, because you know any of us that have been in long term relationships have been at a point where you get a fight about petty shit, or you don't realize you're kind of pulling apart a little bit on things until you you get to a point where you think, oh shit, we are too far apart on this. Let's work on it to come back together. Um. So yeah, I think that they are. I think they're probably one of my favorite couples in media. Really realistic as well. I need to play that game. It's it two is- player only, isn't it? Is it? I don't know if. No, I think you can play it single I've player. I've seen it. Can you? I've seen it cheap as well. It is really, really worth I, playing. I love that. Um, uh, what's it called? A way out. Yeah, a way out. That, that was yeah. so funny. That was <laughs> so I fucking was funny. Off that I loved game. it. See, you say maybe a single player, but I haven't played the game. But from what I've understood by it, that if you're playing it with somebody else, don't they see something different to what you see happening yeah. depending on the scenario? So surely that wouldn't work as a single player. Yeah, yeah, that's how a way out was. Like yeah. when you get split up, Big like, it, you see things. Me and that you should play it together. Some, and then some dick <laughs> happens on your stream and tells you this twist. Yeah, yeah. bastard. Um, really? Oh yeah. That's what happened to me in Gadget. Mm, Lich bastard. came on and just said, "Oh, this is literally just posted the spoiler for no this reason." This is the ending. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awful. But um, <sighs> but yeah, yeah. Regardless, of that, I mean, it takes two is a great game in general. Like it's a, it's it's a very fun game and. Joseph Fares deserves all yeah. the awards him and his studio have gotten from it. Uh, they're good, aren't they? They're good. They're, they are really good, but um, it's it, as a couple, Cody and May, I think, work the best. I, I also think when you get to couples in gaming, I think things are either over romanticized and overwrought like Final Fantasy characters, or oh. they are. <laughs> um, they are over sexualized or they are over dramatized. Whereas this one, it feels like they feel human. Real, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I love that. Good, good, good answer, good answer. I'll do the next bit. 
Um, I've had to go for my backup because Candy's a fucking cow. <laughs> she stole it. <laughs> um, if you're watching the YouTube, here's the clue to who I'm picking. <laughs> um, yeah. Best couples in media. I'm going for Jim Halpert and Pamela Beasley from The American Office. Not Michael and Jack. So... <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. It was a two hundred dollar oh, flat screen, babe. When she gets that fucking boob job, he's like. <laughs> 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 but yes, everyone that knows this show that we this podcast know that it's probably my favourite sitcom slash mockumentary show of all time. I fucking adore it. Um, the Office. Um, throughout the nine seasons, there has been a plot thread that's intrinsic to the very structure of the show, from the very first episode to the very last episode, and that's the romance between Jim and Pam, which obviously started life as Tim and what's her name in Dawn. the English one? Dawn. 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 Tim and Don. It's, it's that, basically. So if you've only seen the English one, it's that, but... It's expanded, obviously, because it's a longer show. Um, spoilers, kind of, for uh, The Office from here on out. But as like sitcom couples go, I, I'm not an expert on sitcoms. You all know that. But like Gadget was saying with um, It Takes Two, those two guys, I think Jim and Pam started off really caricature and daft and wrong place, wrong time all the time just for, like, drama weren't that like oh oh great Pam's now single oh Jim's not single oh Jim's single now Pam's not single do you remember that the yeah. earlier seasons and you're just like fucking get on with it will they won't they will they won't they and then throughout from the like middle season until the end they become such a normal genuinely sweet lovely couple that go through like the first child the second child the fact that they work together as well as live together. I don't know how people fucking do that, for, by the way. I could not do it. Imagine that. <laughs> I've done it. Sitting, Twice. Sitting, I've done it. sitting yeah. next to your wife at work and then coming home and sitting next to your wife at home. Oh, no, thank think, you. No, we were in different departments. <laughs> she works one place, I worked another. No, that's all right. Then. <laughs> the Try running a pub with li- yours. Oh, no. But yeah, and it's really real, like... Towards end, like, uh, well, not not really. Yeah, it is, it is the final season, isn't it? When Jim goes to... Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah, to start a proper career. I and really didn't like that arc that they had. No, no I didn't. season for them. But it was it gave him something to do, but I did like the sacrifice he made for the love. Do you know what I mean? Because and that episode when um, he, he gets that DVD of their like romance for all, all the seasons. I was crying my eyes at me every time I watch it. Remember when he makes a play that DVD? Yeah. It's really sad, but I just think it's a really like how they are. They're like they don't heavy pet at work and stuff. They're, they're not a disc- like like Gadget said. They're not an unrealistic sexualized couple. They're very real and they have arguments. And I think there's one episode where they've got both the kids on them and the kids are stressing the fuck out of them and that's so real that you can tell that those people are parents to separate partners in real life because it's just whew, that, you remember when they bring them to work the kids yeah. and they're just screaming and crying <laughs> that is so real mate that is the realest thing ever oh, but yeah I just I she think was great- um, she was pregnant when she was filming that as well so yeah. Um, at one point. So, yeah, she obviously was going through that, and they had that in the show as well, which is. Which yeah, is cool. exactly. It's just, I don't know. There's just something endearing about them. I mean, they're both very good actors anyway, aren't they? They, um, and, they, they also play, because their re- relationship is reasonably realistic for a sitcom, they play, yeah. they play it off the insanity that is Dwight and Angela's relationship, yeah. oh, God, which is yeah. really cartoony. But also yes, works for yes. them in their characters' needs, and I think so, that's the good juxtaposition with it all. And, and 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 Michael Scott and all his lovers. That man's had many lovers to say he's such a weirdo, <laughs> including Pam's mum. Yeah, including Pam's mum. And <laughs> oh god, it's just yeah. I, I really like them as a couple. I think it's endearing, and it was my second choice, so I didn't have that much written down about them. Speaking of which, who stole my first choice? Candy. Me. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, you can feel free to jump in, like I said. Um, but I'm gonna talk about a couple from a game that I still can't listen to the music 
to without do, just do you want to, do you want to play it for you now you no it absolutely <laughs> not please don't and that is Tidus and Yuna from Final Fantasy X so yeah, oh, one of Tidus those and over- Yuna. Tidus and Yuna, great. Tidus, that's right, yeah. One of those overblown <laughs> Final Fantasy <laughs> romances. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm, just, but, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just mad because I couldn't have Squall and Renua. <laughs> oh, that would have been a close second. <laughs> <laughs> when, she, when she says to him, can I kiss you? And he's like, hmm, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> such, <laughs> such a cool guy, such a cool guy. <laughs> a fur-lined leather jacket, man. Squall definitely doesn't look back at scared. explosions, does he? No, and he definitely <laughs> fucks. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't kiss. No, no. kissing. That's for girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just to dust off the old uh, spoiler klaxon for a 20 year old game, um, I'll be spoiling parts of the story, including the ending. The klaxon doesn't what? come for stuff that old. No. So, yeah, I mean, you will have to excuse me a little bit because I haven't actually played it in 20 years. So I apologize if I'm kind of mis- misremembering parts. But so. Um, I'll help. I'll help. Just to mate, give you some. Worry. Thanks. Just to give you some context um, with part of the story. So we open up with your player character, um, Tidus, about Tidus. to play in a. Bl- about, the, pff, about to play in a blitz, blitzball game in his home city of Zanakand. Well, the What's game's blitzball, in- Candy? It's a underwater um, sort of a <laughs> volley- volleyball, handball, water polo, hockey yeah. type hybrid thing. One of the best mini games ever. No, it was said, no said nobody press, ever. Press X to said, doubt. <laughs> said nobody ever. Between, <laughs> that and the, between that and being hit by lightning, that almost killed me off in the game, quite literally. Um, but as this game is uh, being played, the city is attacked by Sin, which is a huge behemoth-type monster which destroys the city and sends Tidus to the world of Spira. When he arrives in Spira, he is told that Zanakand was destroyed by Sin a thousand years ago. So his mission is to try and get back to Zanakand. Through some of the characters he meets in Spira, he's introduced to Yuna, a young summoner about to start a pilgrimage to obtain the final Aeon and defeat Sin. As the story progresses, Tidus becomes Yuna's guardian during her pilgrimage. Um, and I think their development, the development of their relationship is one of my favourites in gaming. Um, on the one hand, they appear um, basically polar opposites. Tidus is kind of a happy-go-lucky sort of loud athlete, lad, lad, lad. He's a jerk. Yeah, a bit of a, yeah, <laughs> bit of a fuck boy. Uh, irritating, basically, mm. te- standard teenage boy. Fantastic laugh, though. No, no, no. But that, I mean, they, people kind of misread that. But anyway, that I digress. That's out of context, isn't it, that laugh? Exactly. He's um, doing it on purpose. Yuna is a quiet, shy girl on a pilgrimage to save the world, a task, a task she puts before anything else and certainly before having any personal relationships or doing anything to kind of further her own personal life, basically. For reasons. For reasons. Um, as the story progresses, we see the characters start to become more like each other. Yuna learns to have some fun and asks a party that she wants Tidus um, close to her, which is the first time she's asked for anything for herself. Tidus learns the importance of a greater good, while at um, one point all he cared about was getting back to Zanakand. Upon seeing Yuna performing Ascending, he understands the gravity of the mission Yuna is on. He encourages her and supports her on a pilgrimage and stops at nothing to protect her and help her achieve her goal. Um, the couple talk. They do actually like they, they build a friendship. They build a relationship. They talk about their lives. Um, I like how slow the relationships go. It's not just a fancier. Mm-hmm. It's really gradual over the eighty hours. <laughs> you yeah. gonna play this game. <laughs> That's what I mean. They they talk. They build a relationship. They build a friendship. They talk yeah. about their homes. Titus talks about their future. Where and I'll show you know, she's Zanakin. the only person that believes him. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a big part of it, isn't it? And then when he's talking about he wants to show her Zanakins and everything, she just kind of smiles. Yeah. You know, he, he knows nothing. Um, mm. So towards the final act in the game, we learn that upon completing her mission and summoning the final Aeon, um, Yuna's going to die. Um, yep. Tidus obviously was completely unaware of it. Um, and upon the revelation, Tidus realises that he's basically he's been leading Yuna to her death the whole time. Um, he was completely oblivious. He he begs her to abandon her mission, but Yuna breaks down, knowing that she can't let down so many people, which leads on to one of the most iconic cutscenes in video gaming history, and it's the most romantic kissing scene I've ever seen in a game. It's Disney as fuck as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's and, the music. Oh, <laughs> suited mm. suited mm. Danae, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just yeah. such an explosion of feelings and of love and of a doomed future, but also kind of hopefulness, but... 
they're just so like tender with each other as well and oh it's so beautiful it's not it's cry. not dirty and stuff isn't it it's probably no. real and especially coming from <clears throat> square enix that sometimes just do outright fucked up shit <laughs> It's really nice, and again, Disney, like, romance, actual well, romance. It, it kind of almost, like, shows on screen what it's like to kiss somebody you love for the first time, you know? It feels like you're, in, like, floating through, although they're floating through water, but it looks like they're Do you know the space. fact about that scene, where they got the idea from? It's Go the on. exact same scene as the scene in Fern Gully. Really? Yeah, when them two, him and the fairy. I don't remember that bit in Fern Gully. Can you remember it, Stig? When I'm in the fairy, have a kiss. I remember the uh, big black skeleton at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I but, yeah, remember that's where they got the... Hairstyle. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, f- further in the game, we learn that there may be an alternative that Titus can potentially sacrifice his own life to save Yuna's. I mean, sort of in a manner of speaking, it's not exactly, like, it's not quite that simple, but in a, he will cease to be. Um, Basically, you have to fight lots of bosses to stop this happening. Yeah. That's what you have to do. So, this, uh, yeah, the, the team are successful, obviously, in uh, defeating Sin, Yuna and Tidus, Tidus, um, have a few Tidus, final baby. moments, have a few final moments together before the final sending. Uh, Tidus holds Yuna during his final moments, and as he starts to disappear, tells Yuna he loves her and walks through her to meet his end. And 20 years later, I'm still not over it. I watched, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I watched the cut scene whilst I was getting ready. It's like, nope, it's easy coming. It's really but, final as well f- for a game called Final Fantasy. Um, I don't know if you've played the sequel. Um, I, no, I started it, it didn't it's grab It's not me. resolved. It's still not resolved, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, I think it's brave well, for them to be like, fuck it. Well, in the sequel as well, she looks even more like Tidus, I think. Like, she's got the kind yeah. of flicking out hair, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool she's like changed. Everything. She's completely changed how she is, and and she's got guns. Yeah, <laughs> so. she's she's, t- she's taken on a bit of his uh, yeah his personality definitely. there. But, but yeah, yeah I just really liked the together. character development. I thought I thought it really kind of stayed with me over time, and I thought, like you said, Oodles, they take their time with it. They don't rush it. It's not like this mm. great love affair from from the get go kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, just, it's good. Just cute. You'd have picked Lulu though, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, Oren. Oren's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not simp over cartoons, though. <laughs> Let's not do it. Good pick. Um, poor Stig having to listen to the full plot of Final Fantasy X. <laughs> oh, Stig, what you got, mate? Uh, probably one of the most obvious choices there is, but nothing says a fantastic couple who love each other with every fibre of their body and their being than Gomez and Morticia Adams. Academia. Yeah, because and specifically the Raul Julia and uh, Angelica yes. Houston versions, because my Mm-mm-mm. God, like the chemistry that them two have is just outstanding. If someone had told me that these two were bagging off set, I'd yes. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would. Have. I'm not saying that that ever happened, but if if it ever came out that these two were getting absolutely it on, going at it. Yeah, because just the way they look at each other and the body language and the kissing and everything between the two is just outstanding. Stunning, isn't it? Stunning. Yeah. I just, but the it's the the way that they speak to each other as well. Um, how they could make the most morbid shit sound so romantic. Yeah, I absolutely. I've got <laughs> some quotes here. One of them here. They both sat outside in the graveyard, and he says. When we first met years ago, it was an evening much like this. It was my first funeral. You were so pale, uh, beautiful, pale and mysterious. No one was even looking at the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. think someday we'll be buried here side by side, six feet under in matching coffins. Our lifeless bodies rotting together for eternity. And then they have a big old like, <laughs> smooch after it. It's, like, it's just so like morbid, but really yeah, romantic. I love it. The arm it. kissing, the yeah, like the Caramia, Mon Cher, like everything dancing. about them. The dancing. Oh, they're just Fuck. how long's it been since we waltzed? Hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hours. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I, I, that's so good. I think it really helped like how much Raul Julia put into the rule. Like he you could see in those both those films, he is having the time of his life playing that character. Oh, because yeah. he's Big no, time. in Raul Julia as well, he won method acting for fucking well, two years of whatever. Well, yeah, because it, it allowed him to be cartoony and over the top, because that's what the character mm. is. The character is a cartoon character for all intents and yeah. purposes. 
Yeah. But it is. They are they are just so over the top and cartoonish, but their love is just so pure and it's the yeah. one thing that just doesn't waver throughout for, for both films. Do they ever they're... even have an argument? No, I don't think no. so. No, they're, they're just so in love, aren't they? Yeah, they are so in love. Like every person <laughs> who's in a relationship should should look at these two and be like, "That is the that's the goal there. That to be in that that much love, no matter what's going on in your life with your kids, with your family members, with everything else. Like the one thing that doesn't waver between these two is their love." It reminds me of what your first month of being in a new relationship's like, yeah. but that that's yeah. their first month for 10 years. <laughs> Ever. I mean? Forever. Forever. Yeah. They're always in that first month where you just, <laughs> all you want to do is ravish each other. <laughs> yeah, they're so sexually charged as well. They, like, this is a kid's film. But they got <laughs> they got away with it so <laughs> well. A like, lot. They got a, away with it, but it, it's so much that so, and the innuendos and everything, that it just goes over kids' heads. They just, the kids just don't see it. They just see two parents being overly smoochy and kissing yeah. each other and that. But as an adult, you I am surprised they only like, had three kids, to be honest. I'm very surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. very surprised. <laughs> not, not to spend their evenings watching the telly, is it? There's no oh. telly in their bedroom. <laughs> God, no. He says one like, what is it? Like they're going like to passion, to pleasure, to pain. She's like, tonight. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 it does. The, the writing really helped with a lot of that as well. Like oh, their timing God. with each other, the way the characters are written, it worked really, really well. It, I, do, I do like the play on that. That that Fester really admired their relationship, and he was trying to get his own in the second one, wasn't he? Yeah, he was trying to mimic that, but it just didn't turn out well. Oh yeah, Fester. every time he tried to mimic it, like Debbie would just yeah. like, she basically be like, the "Fuck it, you do it. You can't do it, mate. You can't do it." <laughs> yeah. Just this awkward, so good. awkward man trying to mimic yeah. his brother, but being absolutely terrible at it. Yeah, exactly. I think oh, it's a, yeah. I, th- I think it's also a, a, a very good case in point that those two performances were so definitive for that couple. Like, I don't think any other adaptation of the Adams Family has come close no. to what they were able mm. to. Like, Not whether it was, no, the, whether it was the cartoon in the nineties or the um, the two animated films recently, or even the Wednesday series. Like yeah. you can get shades of those characters, but you can't get it as well as they did. No, imagine it, imagine being then. Louis Guzman trying to be Raul Julius <laughs> fucking Gomez. What a fucking mantle to take after something. I wouldn't imagine, do it. I'd be like, no, I'm imagine, not, imagine I'm not doing it. Imagine being Louis Guzman and seeing the hair piece they're going to put on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, like, Louis. I Guzman, just wouldn't do it. <laughs> he's closer to the original like mm. concept yes, he is. of Gomez. Yes, he Adams, is. But Raul Julius was just so different and suave and handsome yeah. just, it, he wasn't what uh, no Gomez he wasn't no. Is. but like no, when when they announced that Lou Guzman was going to be Gomez people like he looks nothing like it it's like oh, actually he does it's he just does a, he does yeah the definitive version for us now <laughs> is are these two yeah, yeah he's, cha- he's changed the narrative hasn't he yeah and yeah they're just they're, they're he's so also my M. Bison as well oh yeah no better it's no better. So I'll let you in on a little on a little secret here. I'm gonna to have to think of a new award now, but I was gonna give a biggie to these two. Ah because oh yeah. I think their performances are that good that it's the type of performance that the academies would and whatever, all the award seasons would completely look over and ignore. Mm. But they are both outstanding. So I'll give you an yeah, early yeah. biggie. To Angelica Houston, Raul Julia for their depiction of Morticia. A preliminary bigger. Yeah. It's first, first, first time we've ever done it. First time. We're breaking the rules. <laughs> breaking the are, rules. The academies of rules. Yeah. Oh, just... They're fuming. They're fuming. <laughs> oh, they're just so good, aren't they? They are. Excellent yeah. pick, mate. Excellent. But I don't, I don't, oh, yeah. That's what we all strive to be, but unfortunately, it's impossible. Biggie. Riggs and Murtaugh. Yeah. <laughs> I, want talk, I want to talk about Lethal Weapon. That's Riggs right, and Murtaugh. No. Um, so I've actually gone with uh, Aragorn and Arwen from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Okay. A character that's so, not in the book. Okay. The tale of Aragorn and Arwen <laughs> is a story written within the appendices of Lord of the Rings. Yes, it is. It narrates the love of the mortal man Aragorn and the immortal elf maiden Arwen telling the story of their first meeting, their eventual betrothal and marriage, and the circumstances of their deaths. Tolkien called the tale really essential to the story, but in contrast to the non-narrative appendices, it extends the main story of the book to cover events both before and after it, one reason it would not fit in the main text. Tolkien also gave another reason for the exclusion, namely that the main text is told from the Hobbit's point of view, as we well know. 
Yes. But when the film came out, um, and I, I absolutely adore all of the films. I think they're fantastic. Um, I was really yeah. drawn to the performances of both Viggo Mortensen and Liv Tyler, respectively playing Aragorn and Arwen. And Very handsome couple. Very handsome. Incredible looking, obviously, Liv um, to be made up to look more elfish, but absolutely stunning with the direction by Peter Jackson. Every sort of scene that she's in, she's glowing. She just looks utterly beautiful. And it's I'm like not going to lie. It's ethereal, isn't it? Angelic. Yeah. I had a mad crush on her. I wonder, mm-hmm. I wonder if she had to wear glasses after that with the amount of bright light shining in her. Yeah. Those, those, <laughs> just having them ring, <laughs> close up them shots ring lights. Face, like 15 <laughs> ring lights around. Because her lights, her eyes are always like glowing with white as well, aren't yeah. they? It's like she's just getting ring light to fuck. <laughs> but almost very similar to what um, Stiggy just said, that I just think their performance of their relationship was done so well that they kind of tell this backstory that you don't really get to see much of because they're not the mm-hmm. forefront characters of the movie, or, although the love story forms a big part of the movies. But I just think yeah. their performances are fantastic. And the scenes that they do share between each other, the looks that they give each other, the sort of pain that you see on Aragorn's face, that she, he knows that she's going to potentially give up her immortal life to be with him. Uh, it's just a, a fantastic love story. And it's also based on um, a tale of other characters, um, a story of Beren and Luthien which is a very similar story that ends up being their life. But there's It's some believable great, um, in the film, isn't it? The believe- uh, totally. It's totally. one of those things like with Gomez and Morticia, you feel like Viggo Mortensen and Liv Tyler might have had some, uh, you know what I mean, some backstage method acting, let's just call it. Rumpy puppy. Mm. It, is, it is quite believable. Not as believable as, obviously, Gomez and Morticia, Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's a, um, a great scene where um, he's concerned about his claim to the throne of Gondor and he's concerned that he feels himself weak. She says to him, why do you fear the past? You're not a Sildur... I can't say the name. A Sildur. A Sildur's, a Sildur's hair, not a Sildur himself. You're not bound to his fate because he doesn't believe, you know, it's that sort of imposter syndrome, isn't he? He doesn't feel like he's strong enough to take on that mantle. And she is always there as that sort of, you know, he carries the burden with him and makes sure that he's strong. She's like the strongest of their relationship. And there's a great scene where they're on talking on the bridge and um, she says, do you remember the first time we met? And he says, I thought I'd wandered into a dream. Long years have passed. You did not have the cares you carry now. Do you remember what I told you? Aragorn says, you said you'd bind yourself to me, forsaking the immortal life of your people. And to that I hold, she says, I would rather share one lifetime with you than face all the ages of this world alone. And as she hands him her pendant, I choose a mortal life. And he says, you cannot give me this. And she says, it is mine to give to whom I will, like my heart. And it's just a beautiful scene. You just, again, feel this history of their love together. Um, and I thought their performance was fantastic. I thought it was incredible for the very little time that she spent together on screen, but sell it every time they're together. I agree. And... I think, uh, yeah, fantastic. And they really sell that they are soulmates. Oh, yeah. It's a good choice. I didn't, I didn't see that coming from you, mate, honestly. Yeah. I really didn't expect it. I wanted to be yeah. Aragorn. I mean, I want to be him. I want to fuck him. He's amazing. He's a handsome guy. He's just, <laughs> he's the perfect epitome of a hero, isn't he? He's so good yeah. in that movie. Yeah, he's really good, isn't he? And, he? and he ends up becoming the lead character as well, doesn't he, after the second one? <laughs> He, yeah. He's the main star, but yeah, really, really chuffing good. good Interesting picks. fact, if you didn't know, during the orc battle, there's a helmet on the floor, and when he goes oh, up to kick God. it, it <laughs> 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 mm. Have we got a bulging romantic sack? We do. It's covered in roses and everything. Um, the, cho- <laughs> the, the chocolate's not the flowers. I think Biggie's been around it. Um, <laughs> yeah, chocolate's gone. Yeah, uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt says, uh, in terms of best couples in media, my favourite is Emma and Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling in La La Land. Uh, they, they were show, one of my alternatives. Yeah, they show yeah, both a perfect a and one. imperfect relationship over the course of the film. I thought their performances were very convincing of a couple in love, which made it all the more devastating to me when, spoilers, they have to mm-hmm. split up for their careers. It remains one of the only yes. films to make me a blubbering wreck when Gosling does his little smile to her at the end of the film after his piano scene. In the words of Thor, in Love and Thunder ring true to me. I want someone to feel shitty about. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that is a good quote. That is a good quote. They could have made yeah. it work. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee Davies has said Kermit and Miss Piggy. It was on. <laughs> no, that's a toxic relationship. <laughs> Uh, I was almost in tears at the end of Muppets Most Wanted when Miss Piggy works out which is the real Kermit. I think you're probably in tears because you watched Muppets Most Wanted, mate. But, you know. They're meant to be good out there. I've never watched them, but... They are good. I like them both. Muppets generally good films. I really love the Muppets, though. I love them. They're fantastic. I can forgive them a lot of things. Same. Yeah. Uh, Mike Halstead has said, Floki and Helga from Vikings on TV. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and also yeah. Wesley and Buttercup from The Princess Bride. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely great choice. Uh, Lady Azabat has said, I agree with this one. Uh, Rick and Evelyn from The Mummy, definitely in my top three. Yeah, because that, that's another one where it does not start off romantic at all, does it? Mm. But two incredibly mm. beautiful people. Mm. Oh, God, yeah. <sighs> just, just, yeah. By panic in, in in a couple, just right there. Where do I look? <laughs> yeah. Where do you go? <laughs> uh, exactly. And she also says, also Morticia and Gomez. Mm-mm. That's the winner for me. That's um, the winner. Some bald idiot called Gadget 8 Bit uh, <laughs> yeah. said, uh, Dom and Brian from Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long Ultimate gear story, that. Without you, my friend. I, I, yes. I, do, I do feel that, that 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 series would have ended a lot sooner if the two of them just admitted their love for each other, got down and boned. Yeah, <laughs> made up time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It would have been beautiful as well. I think it would have been stunning. It would have been a fast and furious love scene. Wait. He'd have had his hands round his bald head. <laughs> yeah, it would have been beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Bang into it. Cool, uh, bit, cool, bit, cool, bit. cool. Biggie, you missed... Oh, got more? Yeah, I've got three more. Biggie, you missed two from your section, so I'll put put them out here. Uh, oh, he's get, you're in probation, you lad. Uh, <laughs> Robotic Monkey says, A love letter in the form of a haiku. You make me happy. You are cheesy and taste good. Pizza, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> to Great which couple. Cow Goes Moo replied, Haikus are easy, but sometimes they don't make sense. Refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So pizza, right? Uh, can I don't know if you've ever heard of pizza. Basically, <laughs> it's don't, dough. Don't, don't. <laughs> and it's got beautiful They're the best crust. love handles you can have. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> last up, Nim- yesterday. Last up, known food pervert Nimrod Hicks has oh, said, yeah. um, "My couple is Jake and Amy from Brooklyn Nine Nine, the Peraltiago." I don't yeah, know what that is. They're great. They're, they're fantastic. You really couple. need to watch Brooklyn Nine Nine. It's I know really you, yeah. good. I know you don't like American sitcoms, uh, Oodles, but it's... No, but when you told me to watch Always Sunny, I ended up absolutely adoring yeah. it. Well, it's it's, so. it's it's up there. So it's it's like a lot of the humour style of Always Sunny, but with the gentleness of The Office. Okay, like, that's a not, good... It's not, yeah. But it, it, it's not like a laugh track sitcom. No. It's got no Danny DeVito climbing out of fucking... <laughs> naked. No, <but> <laughs> <laughs> no, None of that. <laughs> it's, got, it's got Terry Crews making his muscles bounce a lot. I do like Terry Crews. I do like Terry Crews. I mean, everybody loves Terry, and Terry loves yogurt. Yeah. Watch it. <laughs> and the old, oh, the characters, are, every, all of them are great in their own way. Captain Holt is just incredible. Captain Holt's weird. Is, is, is it the, is it the um, Andy Samberg one? Yeah. That? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I like him as well. Mm. It's, okay. it's very, very good. All seven seasons are brilliant. Just a silly yeah. show. It's just a good watch. It. Yeah. Cool. I will. Is that everything? Yes. Excellent. Thank you for all your feedback and love letters and stuff. More next week. Bring your love letters. So, as always, links to all our extracurricular activities are in the show notes and at modernescapism.co.uk. And please consider becoming a patron to help support our endeavour. And please, please, please give us five-star reviews. Next week, we are bumping up the patron's choice. So, if you are a patron... Make sure that you will see the choices again that you can vote for. Don't do it wrong. Pick a good <laughs> choice. <laughs> but then again, it's, it's their down choice. To you. They're not wrong oodles. Yeah, that is democracy. That's democracy. Don't pick anal unless it's a deal breaker. Wow. Fucking hell. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> but yes. Speaking of patrons, if you are a patron, you will meet us in the green room in a second. If you are not, why not? Why? Not, but it's the end of the show for you. So, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Are you ready, Squeaky? Fucking hell. <laughs> Sound a hamster. Buying some WD-40 for his birthday. It actually sounds like the love episode. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it certainly was earlier in this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought he had a headache. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, his penis headache. <laughs> Whoa.